right, well, I sure as fuck can't sleep tonight, so uh, my sleep schedule's been fucking weird. So uh, give me two seconds. I'm going to go get a Diet Coke and pee, and then we will uh, we will get this started. I, I don't know what's going to be in this video for the most part, but uh, it should be interesting. I'll tell you all about it. I'll be back literally in like two minutes, and we'll uh, we'll start watching this together. What sleep? Fuck, dude. I don't know. I'll be right back. Uh, I have not played Forza yet. No, I have it. Um, I have it, uh, you know, on, on Game Pass. In fact, I have it installed on Game Pass. But uh, there we go, baby. Um, but it doesn't launch for us Game Pass folks until uh, I think the 9th is what it is. <coughs> okay. So good to see you guys. Um it's late. It's one o'clock in the morning, one uh, thirty, something like that. Hang on. Uh, so let me just tell you what's going on with this, and then we can watch this together. So I did a video last week about this new Sony game called We Are F O K or O. I don't fucking know something like that. It was one of the games that was shown at um, uh, State of Play, PlayStation State of Play, and. You know, it's it's a very woke, as they say, progressive, uh, it seems to be anyway, uh, game. It didn't look like my kind of game. wasn't something I would probably play, although I'll probably play it because I know the art director who's phenomenally talented. Uh, she's wonderfully gifted. I love her stuff in a piece of tongue. I've worked with her before. Um, but it's, you know, it seems kind of like a very slow-paced conversation, choose conversation game. I, I don't know, whatever. But in it, one of the characters in the trailer is wearing a black teen trans lives matters shirt. Uh, and I made a video about it because I had seen so much negative comments uh, in a variety of locations, whether it's NeoGAF or the actual PlayStation blog. Um, and so I was just kind of like, um, you know, um, the comments were just so cruel and so mean and so disrespectful that I was just like, this is shitty. So I made this uh, video and then I'm online tonight on my YouTube channel. And this one guy's like post a comment about, you know, they're pushing the SJW agenda. And I said, what agenda do you think these folks have? What are you talking about? And he links me to this video that I'm about to show you that we're about to watch together. It's very long. It's like an hour and X minutes, like an hour and 15 minutes. So I, I, I may get bored. You know me, I have ADD. It's nothing against the guy. I don't know who he is. 
Uh, he's, I mean, he's got a very popular YouTube channel. I know that he was somebody who got kicked off Patreon back in the day. That doesn't mean anything. I'm just saying that's how I know him. He's more, you know, but I've never watched any of his stuff. Maybe I'll fucking agree with the guy. I don't fucking know. Uh, but probably not because I kind of scrubbed through it for about 10 minutes. Not No, about 10 seconds. And I heard some things where he clearly doesn't agree with me. So, you know, well, uh, let's see what we got. So this is the fella. Um... Uh, oh, hey, that's coming up. Okay, cool. I didn't know that. All right, so this is him. And uh, again, if you want to comment, comment. If you want to call in on the Discord, we can talk live. Uh, let's see what he has to say. And obviously, I'm going to stop this. Um, Morgan says, isn't Sargon a super hateful dude? He might be. I mean, look, if I get 10 minutes into this and he's just a prick, then I'm like, yeah, okay. I mean, I, I, I don't know who, I don't know what his take is, right? So... But I, the, the reason it even interests me is, like I said, because this one guy on my YouTube channel is not the only one who's commenting on, oh, the SJW agenda or the LGBT agenda. And I'm just kind of like, I, I don't know what that agenda is. It makes it kind of sound like, um, you know, and I'm not trying to be silly about it, but it makes it sound like they've handed out like a syllabus or something. And it's like, this is the LGBT agenda. And I'm just like. What are, you, what are you people talking about? So let's, let's, uh, uh, Toby Moss, you don't know him. I know of him, like I said, because I, the first time I ever heard of him is like it was either Patreon or something that they said, you can't be on our channel anymore. And I, you know, unless the guy was out there, you know, promoting violence, um, you know, or out and out lying about things, even then, I, I don't have a problem with him. Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't know him. But that's how I know about the guy. I don't know Sarkeesian. I know Anita. I don't know her personally, but I know who Anita Sarkeesian is. Yeah. Um, Robbie, can't we just agree we disagree? I don't know. I don't know what he's going to say. Let's watch together and find out, shall we? Um, here we go. Oh. That's odd. I mean, again, I don't think the guy has to know my shit. He doesn't have to know my games. But uh, I assure you, my channel is not an inclusion diverse. I mean, I believe in those things. Uh, but it's not like that's the gist of my channel. Go look at my channel. It's mostly about Metroid <laughs> these days. So, okay, here we go. But if you're watching, since you subscribe, thank you for the subscription. I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you so much. Oh, you can't hear it. You can't hear it. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Hang on. Uh, let me let me let me turn it up. Hang on. I apologize, fellas. Tell me if this is better. Let me let me backtrack a second. These sort of advocacy movements, and I'm subscribed to a is channel this better? Called, is this better? Uh, David Jaffe. Uh, just a small channel, forty thousand subscribers. Uh, hey, if he's ever hey, done that's a lot of work for me. Fuck you, bitch. Like now he's a diversity inclusion and equity advocacy channel on the internet and so I okay so can you guys hear that is that better uh, but yeah he says i'm an inclusion diversity advocacy channel which is okay okay cool let's keep going but well i'll uh I'll... i'm i should not be on twitch am i on twitch are you guys watching me on twitch oh fuck it i don't care i'm not supposed to do that i don't mean to be doing that but if it's working Hopefully, you know, um, I, I, fuck, uh, let me fucking turn this shit off. Then hang on. Don't go anywhere or go somewhere. If you want, I'm turning off monetization. I don't want to get my channel fucked because of this. Um, okay. There we go. Save. Yeah. You know what? Here we go. Let's go. Definitely learn how to be more inclusive in what I do. I definitely want a bit more diversity. And, uh, so I was watching one of his videos and it was just really weird how, <laughs> I've heard he's been around, and for some reason, somehow, still, he doesn't get what's going on. No. He doesn't see that there's uh, something happening. And I just thought it might be worth having a look at what he thinks of this. Okay. Because I just find it fascinating that, as a man who I... I th I'm on Facebook, too? You're fucking with me. Why would I be on Facebook? You know, OBS updates a teeny tiny bit. And suddenly I'm on fucking Facebook. You know what? Fuck you guys. Hang on. I'm checking. God damn it, Maverick. Well, I'll get back to this guy. Hang on a minute.
But I hope you don't mind if you're coming here and you're acting like, David, shut up, let me hear him. I'm going to pretend this is a conversation. This is how I do it. This is how I do it. That's how I do my thing. <laughs> Hang on. I want to just make sure I'm not... I don't care if I'm... Fuck it. If I'm on Facebook, I'm on Facebook. What are you going to do? I mean, I... You know. How do I know if I'm on Facebook? <laughs> are you a moron, Javi? No, I'm not a moron. I'm just trying to watch this video here. Or this man right here on his... Uh, you know. All right. Uh, fuck it. I don't care. Whatever. It is what it is. Let's go. All right. Here we go. I think has got plenty of experience dealing with radical left-wing activists uh, and after being grilled and I'm on OnlyFans well nice. over the coals himself I'm genuinely surprised that he's not more cynical about it all uh, but instead he seems to have been uh, taken in completely and maybe maybe this can serve as something of a red pill to pull him out of the oh, matrix no. you know what I wish Saragon, Akkad, Mr. Akkad um <sighs> I mean, it's your channel, obviously. You're speaking to your people. I understand. But I'm just like... <sighs> it's just so front-loaded. It's just like, don't, don't fucking come at me like I'm going to need to be pulled out. Maybe you need to be pulled in. Let's just kind of... Let's, let's hear each other a little bit, pal. Here we go. So. So. It was this video here. Uh, it's called PlayStation Game Goes Woke AF. Here we go again. And so uh, David had some thoughts on it, and I, I figure we'd just watch along, have a little bit of commentary. Hey, chat, I do have it all uh, loaded up, don't worry. Yes, David Jaffe, God of War, David Jaffe, that's correct. I thought you said I'm a troll. Well, I, I wish he was, actually. I don't think he's a troll. Uh, I, I thought you said I hadn't done anything. Now you know who I am, you fucker. Um, I think he's um, being... Uh, directed uh, by people who, not not like in a conscious way, but he's got this kind of ideological uh, pressure being put on him. Um, That's so condescending, pal, but let's keep going. That he's not, uh, not doing a very good job of analyzing. So like, we couldn't just disagree. We can't just disagree on the subject at hand. It has to be that I'm being bamboozled and hoodwinked and brainwashed, and you're the guy who knows the lay of the land. Is that what it is? I understand. Let's keep going. I know people like you. Uh, I thought I might try and help them out. So let's, oh, please uh, help me out, Akkad, uh, let's of begin. the Cincinnati Akkads. Let's make sure I'm okay. By the way, this guy so reminds me, um, if you've ever watched, and it's not a bad thing, he's a, he's a good-looking uh, chick magnet, but... If you ever watched the movie The Holiday, uh, he was also in something else recently, uh, an action movie. The guy in The Holiday, he's the dude that Kate Winslet has a crush on, and then she eventually gets over him. But I think he was in a big action movie recently, like a DC or a Marvel movie. But anyway, he kind of looks like that guy. Um, here we go. I don't want a boomer moment, do I? God forbid. Hello, Gino okay, Soul. Let me know if this doesn't work. As I begin this video, I would like to introduce you or reacquaint you with one of some gamers' biggest line of bullshit. It kind of goes something like this. I don't mind diversity in my games. I don't mind diversity. I'm not homophobic. I'm not racist. I'm not anti-Semitic, what have you. I just don't like when companies take characters that we already love and know and they, they force this agenda uh, into the characters. Wow. There's a lot to say. So if you don't yeah. like an external... Yes. Okay ideological agenda being forced into a property or product that you like that's a line of bullshit uh what did i say well keep going keep going to david it's a line of bullshit that's weird because it is an agenda like him going oh like as if that's just something that is made up it's just in the ether so oh, it's a conspiracy theory perhaps uh nonsense david absolute nonsense we can see it we can trace it we can go and read their papers in which they describe what it is they want to do there are in fact university textbooks that i've read and you haven't that say exactly what they're going to do you may be aware of someone called kimberly crenshaw you may be aware of ibrahim x kendi and uh, a bunch yes, of others who are directly book. trying to manipulate our popular culture and you're just sat here going yeah well you just hate women you just hate black people you just hate gays nope 
I mean, yeah. but you're not, you're not. Okay. So let me, let me pull any kind of emotion out of this because obviously it would be easy to look at this guy um, and just dismiss him, but I'm not going to do that out of respect for, you know, him and he's a subscriber and he, you know, okay. So first off, this is a preamble to what I'm about to say. So I'm, what I was saying, Assad, 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 um, of Akkad, no, Sargon, um, is that the line that you hear that is bullshit. It's not, is, I don't like it when they take Spider-Man, Superman, Wonder Woman characters that we all know and love, and then they try to gender bend them or they try to change their, you know, whatever, their faith, their race, what have you, okay? That's where a lot of people online will tell you, it's not that I don't hate, it's not that I don't like trans people, women, LGBT, whatever, it's that I don't want them fucking with art, make some new characters, right? That's what I'm talking about. And I'm saying that for a lot of those people who stick that flag in the ground and say, that's my view, that is bullshit. I'm not saying it's bullshit for all of them. I can, and I say that in this video, I can totally understand that if you love Peter Parker as who he is, a Christian white dude from New York, I get that you wouldn't want him suddenly to become a Muslim guy. Um, you know, but that's why there's Miles Morales in some ways, not that Miles is Muslim, you know what I'm saying? And I, and I think that's fine. Nothing wrong with going, no, I want Peter to be the Peter that he was created to be. Totally fine with that. But what I'm saying is, and what I'm about to get to, is that that more and more proves out to be sort of a line of bullshit that allows people who are anti-LGBT, anti-Jewish, anti-Muslim, anti-pretty much anything uh, that's sort of you guys call woke if you support it, that allows them to kind of have a, it's not that I'm racist. It's just, it's cause it's affecting the property, the brand, the intellectual property. You understand? That's what I'm talking about is the bullshit. And we're about, we're about to see why I'll, I'll, I'll address the books and the agenda in a moment though. Well, fuck it. I'll address it now. Why not? Um, so it's not that I don't have an, I, I have that guy's book, uh, called stamped from the beginning. I, I don't know how to say his name. It's a huge fucking phone book of a book about, racism in the United States. I know exactly what you're talking about. I have read that book. I haven't read the, the woman you're talking about, the first woman, okay? Um, but, you know, there's also books out there by far right-wing leaning people that talk about, you know, we want, um, you know, we feel America is a Christian culture and we want America to go back to the way it was in the 50s and this is our agenda. I don't think everyone who's a conservative feels that way. I don't think everyone who supports even Donald Trump, who I think is a nightmare, feels that way. I don't think people who vote Republican feel that way. But are there people in that group that that would love to see that? Sure, just like I'm sure there are people on the left that would. But when I'm telling you, when I put agenda in quotes, it's because I don't know what you've done with your life other than the channel, which is great. Congratulations on your success. But as a guy who has worked in entertainment and has worked for over 20 years, primarily in video games and the video game industry at the highest level in terms of, I don't mean my shit's the best. I mean, in terms of I was working at PlayStation at Sony for Sony. So, you know, it wasn't like I was working at some rinky dink studio that you never heard of. If there was some kind of agenda coming in the door, like once a month we met with LGBT groups and Muslim groups and Jewish groups and black groups groups. And it's like, look, this is your agenda, folks. We've got, I would know about it. I, I, and I would openly admit it. Anybody who watches my channel and, and you do, and I appreciate that would know that I don't just cause I used to work with and for Sony, I, I don't sugarcoat things. I'll go after Sony in terms of creative decisions they're making. I'm telling you that didn't exist. We, no one ever sat us down and said, this is the agenda. This is what we want your games to be about. I know you want to make your character look like this, Jaffe, but from on high, we're getting this message that it probably, you need a little bit more diversity. Never occurred in over 20 years in video games. Okay. Now, what I think you're going to say, which is fine. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, what I think you're going to say is, oh, well, it's, it, it's so insidious. It's so under the floorboards. It's so baked into the cake that you don't even know it. 
And I'm like, okay, well, I mean, that would be horrible. I would hate to discover that, but my mind is open. Maybe on this very talk, you can explain to me, not by pointing out an obscure book that 99% of people who make video games have never heard of, let alone read, but if you can point out specifics, uh, I mean, hell, you can read Mein Kampf and say that everybody from Germany, just because it's, a, it, it, you know, wanted to kill all the Jews. Well, that's not true. Um, the people who subscribe to his crazy views did, but just because you can point to a book that may or may not, but I'll trust you on this. Let's say the book does say, we want to change the culture this way, that way, this way, that way. Okay, well, I, I don't really, you know, know what you're talking about, but that doesn't mean that just because the book says it, that's how I live my life. I just, I don't understand. Um, my most recent game was 2017. Yes, which is what, three years ago, fuck off. Um, so is it a more recent thing? Well, let me tell you this, uh, input funny, um, in the chat, my last game, the art director, one of the art directors on it was Nafisa Tung, who is also the art director on this new game we're talking about. Uh, we are OFK or whatever. And Nafisa, by the way, uh, now, okay. So let, okay. So I don't think, you know, it's, it's, it's no one's business, but I don't think Nafisa would care. Nafisa is a, uh, a lesbian woman, uh, in a very happy, healthy relationship with her girlfriend, very sweet lady. I've met the, I've met her. She came into the office a few times. Um, and her and I debated and discussed politics all the time. I love debating and discussing with Nafisa. Okay. And sometimes I walked away wiser and more, uh, educated. And sometimes I was like, yeah, I don't agree. Right. I, I remember one time we had this debate about ghost in the shell, the, the live movie. And she was really upset. She's an Asian woman. She's really upset that uh, Scarlett Johansson was cast. And she's like, it's whitewashing. And I'm like, okay, I don't think you're wrong necessarily, but I also don't think you can point to an Asian actress that can open a movie yet. Like there aren't any, you can't point. I mean, at the time it was like, you know, I mean, you, you, you can't even point to Olivia Munn who's Asian or you're Asian, right? If you're gonna spend $120 million on a motion picture, you need to put somebody in it that has global appeal from a standpoint of they've already proven people will show up and see their movies. And this is after she had done Lucy and all that shit, right? Not Nafisa, she's not an actress, but Scarlett Johansson. So I didn't agree with her on that. But there were other things where she educated me and I was like, oh my God, that makes total sense. Um, one specifically is we had, I'm gonna get back to the video, I promise. I don't wanna bore you, but I, I wanna tell you this just so you get an idea of, of this relationship in 2017, 2018. Uh, we had in Drawn to Death, my last game, uh, we had a Native American skin, right? You know, that you could unlock and buy or whatever. I forget how you acquired it. And I saw the concept art and I was like, that's great, let's do it. And Nafisa said, well, wait a minute, you know, what about all the, uh, art like the, I, I I know they're not called hieroglyphics but if you know the the, the Native American indigenous people they're the, you know if you look how they decorate their shields and their 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 gear and all this stuff and their leggings there's a very specific pattern and I said I don't fucking know what do you mean it looks cool it looks like you know badass Native American dude and and she's like yeah but those have very specific meanings to different tribes and if you just willy-nilly put this shit out there um you're um kind of being a dick and you're disrespecting their entire group. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I had no idea. I said, well, yeah, if you want to, if you want to, you know, let me know what it should be, let's change it to that. And I was like, Oh, okay. It took, it took all of five minutes for her to explain it. Now, if, if is that woke, is that an agenda or is that just somebody going, Hey, you know, as my Angelou says, when you know better, you do better. She learned, she educated herself about this and she's like, Oh, we probably don't want to, you know, disrespect an entire group of people if we don't have to. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Excellent. And we, and we did it. Right. So, um, let's, let's move on. Then. I don't know what to tell you, David. Why is that even on your mind? Wait, I gotta go Why back. Black, black people, you just hate gays. I mean, I don't know what to tell you, David. Why is that even on your mind? It's on my mind, like I said, because you're basically talking about an excuse a lot of people use when they say, I don't hate black people, but I don't hate trans people, but I don't hate Muslim people, but please stop taking characters that we hold near and dear that have been in pop culture for a very long time and changing them, right? And so when that argument or when that defense on their behalf gets torn down, which is what this is about right now this this video game 
it makes it very clear that they have another issue. It's not that they're worried about protecting intellectual property's purity of don't change it. Don't change Peter Parker to a white guy, uh, uh, from a white guy. Don't make Wonder Woman a man. Don't make um, John Stewart, the Green Lantern, a white dude. Let it be what the creators wanted. It's very clear that a lot of these people clearly have a different, they're the ones who have a very different agenda. There you go, okay? Um, Robbie Strange says, why can't you take people at their word? Maybe they don't hate black people. I'm sure the one, the ones, Robbie, like I just said, the ones who literally just said, or the ones who say, we have a problem with you changing these characters. I don't have a problem with that. I can respect that. I don't care about that. It doesn't bother me, but I understand that. I understand that if you came up with Peter Parker as Peter Parker, you don't want that changed. I didn't say that person hated a black person. I said that if you use that as an excuse and then you say what they're about to say here, it's clear that that was just a smokescreen. But no, if you don't like it, that's fine. I have no issues with that. Why are you thinking such thoughts? You dunce. <laughs> well, okay. I hope he explains why I'm a dunce though. I didn't mean to get to insults already. But, like, who made you think like this? Okay. Well, Nafisa is one, because I worked with her, and she articulated, unlike you, at least at the moment, God, I'm bad, Sargon, um, at least at the moment, she was able to pull me aside and say, this is a problem. And I says, why is it a problem? She says, oh, well, let me explain. I'm like, oh, that makes sense. I don't want to insult uh, a bunch of indigenous people, right? I have a trans son. Uh, Sargon, um, and he has made it very clear to me based on his life experience and based on uh, the news that he shares with me about hate crimes against LGBT people. I have a uh, gay brother who lives in Alabama. He has made it clear. So why is it on my mind? Because A, friends of mine, colleagues of mine have educated me in a way, unlike you, that just says, you're a dunce. I'm like, well, if I'm a dunce, explain to me how I'm a dunce. Explain to me how it don't don't cite a book that most people ha haven't read unless you can unless you can draw a link between that book you're citing and how that book has affected Hollywood, California or Silicon Valley or wherever these products are made. And I mean, literally in, in court, it's called access or at least an American court. Right. Which is if someone sues you and says you're ripping off my ship. One of the things that the plaintiff has to prove uh, unless the, the unless the specifics are so striking between the two properties is this thing the courts call access, right? Which is you have to have proven if I wrote Spider-Man and I'm suing Marvel, I have to prove that there was some point, which I wasn't even alive in, where I somehow sent my script to Marvel Comics in New York in 1963 called Spider-Man, right? I would have access to them and they would have evidence that my script was in the Marvel offices. And suddenly it makes it very hard to refute possible but hard to refute that claim you're saying there are people who have an agenda and i'm sure there are uh, i'm sure there are um but people have agendas all over the place but just because they write a book and just because it's an agenda you don't like just because i said like mein Kampf, just because those agendas exist doesn't mean that i mean offer some fucking proof baby of how that agenda has affected the creative process i don't i don't understand like, when someone says, I don't like a particular thing, the correct and appropriate response is not, well, you must just hate this entire category of people. I didn't say that. If you would let me actually finish this segment, I'm not, I literally say, if you actually don't like the change in the character because you like the character to stay where it is, I don't have a problem with that. I can understand that. No one thinks like that. No one thinks like that. However, it is a very useful tactic for activists in order to try and silence those people who would object to the things that they're doing. Isn't it, David? No, it's not. You're, 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 it's simply, that's not what I'm doing. Your, your thesis would hold water if what I had said was anyone who offers up this line of thought does if you offer up this line of thought you don't like black people you don't like gays you don't like whatever but i didn't say that if you would let me actually finish before you comment i don't know maybe you'll understand so again like 
I'm amazed that after so many years in close contact with these kinds of people that you haven't managed to figure this out yet, that I have to do the stream be like David. It's nothing to do with hating anyone. It's about, and this is the key thing mm -hmm. that I want you to pay attention I'm to. I'm listening. I'm totally, not even joking. I'm totally entering in this conversation, which, you know, is, is this would be like in the, in the movies where he's like on Mars and he sends this back to me and he gets it in a month. doesn't matter. I'm totally listening in good faith, though. Here we go. Being aware of a nefarious will that is operating on something I like and therefore by proxy on me. I know what they want because I've read what they're trying to achieve. Okay, this is what I, and maybe he will, maybe he will uh, explain this in a moment, and I hope he does. But it sounds like what he's saying is just because there are people out there, like the books he cited, and, and, and I didn't really see that in the book I read, but let's take that woman he was citing, that do, if they scream from the mountaintops with a megaphone, I want to change society and I want it to be this way. Even though there are those people out there, I hope he's about to show me, because he says, you know, I'm gonna teach you, David, you dunce. I hope he's gonna show me where there is proof of that influence or proof of that We've read this guy's book, we've read this woman's book, and here's the memo from Universal Studios of all of our movies now have to do this because we read this book. I mean, otherwise you're just, you know, I'm not saying you're right or wrong, but I'm saying that you're just sort of, you know, I don't know if you're making it up, but you're making this assumption and you're calling it true. And I'm like, that doesn't sound very open-minded. It sounds like you're, you're dyed in the wool, you believe this, which is great, but I hope you tell me why. Here we go. Um, Oh, I am feeling better, Chester. Thank you. I had just a rough fucking busy as fuck day. I, I apologize about not doing game night. I'll tell you guys about it later. You haven't. Maybe you should. Or at least maybe you should check out, like, my work, James Lindsay's work, someone's work. Your and work? I, you have a YouTube channel. What do you do all day? I don't know what your fucking work is. Be one's work that would explain to you in detail using the primary sources. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. I hope he's about to do it. I hope he's about to do it. Don't tell me to go check out your work. You tell me right now why you think an isolated book or 20 has any influence over what creative people do. I have direct firsthand knowledge of working in the video game industry, which is specifically what we're talking about for over 20 years. And I'm telling you, and I wouldn't lie to you, I have no agenda here. That is never, and I ran studios. Uh, I was the creative director at Sony Santa Monica. I was up and down that chain of power at every company. Never once, never once was a conversation had. You, the only thing I can ever remember is there was Phil Harrison who ran Sony um, PlayStation or I forget what, but he was, he was the big head honcho for a while for a couple years. And I remember once he sent a memo out and he says, um, I saw this movie over the weekend, uh, an inconvenient truth, which if you remember was the Al Gore environment, global warming thing. And he says, boy, it, it sure would be great if we could somehow express the message and the importance of, of global warming in our games. And that's the only thing I ever saw. And it didn't, trust me, you can look at the Sony output when he was there and a few years after, because he would have greenlit those movies, uh, those games a few years after. Um, I, I never saw uh, any Sony game that reflected global warming as a problem. So, you know, um, Doug says, five minutes in, I like most of Jaffe's videos. Thank you, sir. But his reactions are hard to watch. He never lets the trailer or speaker go for three seconds. I know that. I know that. And let me just, while I have you here, let me just make it very clear. When I say game design genius, God of War, all of that is, is meant to be stupid. It's meant to be annoying to people who think I'm serious. And when I stop on reaction videos, it's because you can go watch the clean video yourself. People are like, but you're talking over the Batman trailer. I'm like, I know, why are you here? You can go watch the pristine thing and then come back and watch me if you want, but you just wanna, you, you want me to hold your hand while we watch the fucking trailer together? Here we go, let's keep going.
And I can name them all if you want. I can give you a list if you look. Just explain it. Don't. I don't. They're trying to achieve. I don't want a list. I want you to tell me how this agenda, based on these books that you have seen, has gotten itself into the video game design documents and the video game production process. Because when I see someone acting through a particular medium that I'm enjoying, Mm -hmm. and they if I just simply go back a few steps and read what they're trying to achieve before they interface with the thing I'm trying to enjoy. And I see that they say, well, look, what we're trying to do is change society. We've got a plan here, right? We're gonna, we're gonna change these people's thoughts by altering the way that they think about and perceive that thing that they're dealing with. Mm-hmm. And that is going to allow us to do X, Y, or Z, whatever their plan is. In this case- <laughs> He said Z. This is particularly nefarious because what they're trying to do is fundamentally overturn Western liberal democracies and the society that underpins them because they view it as an outgrowth of white supremacy. They view the American Republic as a white supremacist project. And when you've got these kind of lunatics who are essentially... So much here. First, let me, let me, let me address somebody in the chat who says, uh, this isn't the wholesome future for Canadians. It's a hell of a name, sir. Um, who says, uh, Sargon is right. Again, this is the problem I have with a lot of people, uh, in general on the internet. I I don't have a problem if you think Sargon is right, but you literally have wasted time in your life, um, by writing Sargon is right. Why is he right? What makes him right? Where's your evidence that he's right? I'm not saying he's wrong. My mind is open, right? I mean... But let's just briefly take the uh, the uh, white supremacy thing. The fact of the matter is, is I don't I don't think it's an agenda to say that there is a great deal of white supremacy baked into the DNA of America. You see it in the policing system still. That's why they were created back in the day as slave catchers, at least the ones we have over here. Um, you see it in the the banking system, the monetary system, the education system, and again. That doesn't mean America is a country filled with people who hate blacks and lesbians and gays and Jews and all that. It doesn't mean that. It me all it means for the people like me that go, it's a real thing. Is the sooner we as a group can recognize that there is still a lot of sort of racism built into some foundational aspects of the country, the sooner we can sort of get over this and heal and not deal with this is the way we have, which is these, this, this sort of racial divide in America. That's it. I'm not saying the people you're talking about don't have some, let's overthrow the government. That's fine. But that's, again, you're lumping everybody into this, um, category. Well, Franklin, I don't know what to tell you. Franklin says, give me a break. Months of riots over a black guy getting killed. I I'm, 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 I'm sorry that you think that's what it was, man, but I can tell you that, you know, you have to go back to, I mean, you can go back and keep going back, but take Colin Kaepernick, right? Um, this is, you know, a lot of people simply won't listen or they don't believe that uh, there's a problem with police abuse. It doesn't mean all cops are abusers and racist, but this has been going on um, for a very long time. So the idea that if you think the riots over the last summer were only about George Floyd, George Floyd was the tipping point. George Floyd was the point where people said, okay, enough. We, 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 We can't handle this anymore. That's that. It wasn't one guy. Okay. Um, Police invented as slave catchers because there was no crime. I didn't say that trip. I said that the police that we know today, I mean, again, I, I mean, I'm, I'm literally entering this in good faith. And I would, I would, I would advise you, or I would hope you would do the same. Um, when you're saying LOL police invented as slave catchers, go look it up. That doesn't mean they're slave catchers today. It doesn't mean everyone that believes in the, uh, 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 the, the, the jail system today is a racist, but to deny that history, I mean, it, it happened. It's, it's go, go read it, go fucking read it. Um, 
They're, they're like Nazis, basically, David. They are genuinely like Nazis. They I get warm and fuzzy when he says my first name. Is that that maybe I need to examine that, right? I really don't. But still, it's 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 unnerving when he says my name. Essentially, they they're like Nazis, basically, David. They are genuinely like Nazis. They genuinely look at all of humanity as power blocks, racial power blocks, or gender power blocks, and they're sat there going, right, okay, how can we weaponize? those what we consider to be fringe minorities against the majority in the center and overturn it in order to create a new kind of society why would i play into that why would i go well well you know i i don't hate women or gays or black people i'm just going to be all right with whatever the changes they've made and carry on as their willing puppet why would i do that you, I, I don't know what you're talking about what there's a video game with a lady wearing a t-shirt that says black teen trans lives matter black teen trans lives do matter and it's also made by the way by uh at least the art direction is done by a woman uh who who's an open lesbian um and a muslim and who probably feels that black teen lives trans lives do matter and also by the way out of all the trans people that are murdered in this country and hate crime black trans women have the highest rate compared to any other LGBT group. So I don't know what you think they're asking you to do. All they're fucking doing is putting out a video game that reflects their views of the world. Why? What is it? How is it going to? How are your strings going to be pulled just because that game comes out? I don't understand. I uh, I watched. Uh, you know, I used to love Glee. That show Glee, right? Well, and I really loved it. If I can be honest with you and, and, and have a little moment, a little bro moment, Shargon, I really loved it because, um, well, I, I love the music and I, I love theater and all that. But but when Melissa Benoist came on, who's Supergirl now, she's my girlfriend, um, she played a character named Marley Rose. And she was friends with this black dude who was a, in, on the show, was a trans woman. Um, well... It's not, I, I didn't watch it and go, oh my God, I have to call my new best friend Sargon. My strings are being pulled like a puppet. I'm like, oh, there's a character on Glee who's a black trans woman. The only thing that might be happening is that in terms of if there is an agenda or not, the only invisible strings that could be happening are the more you see that, the more normalized it is. But why is that a problem? For a long time on TV, you couldn't have married couples with their beds together because it would imply they had sex. You couldn't have couples in the movies that were uh, mixed race. Now you don't even think about it. How are these bad things? Yes, there are trans people in the world and they deserve as much respect and, 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 and care and kindness as anybody else in the fucking world. I, I don't, I mean, but that's the only puppet strings that uh, could be happening. And again, if it is, it's happening on behalf of the writers specifically. It's happening on behalf of Nafisa specifically and the team she's working with. There's no agenda. Nafisa's probably like, I want to tell a story about me and the people that, you know, I know. Franklin says Glee is an LGBT friendly show. Cool. Was that bad? Why is it bad? Why wouldn't I just say, hey, get fucked. Get fucked, you fucking communist shits who've got like some racial nationalist agenda and you're using my media, my popular media, the culture that I'm trying to enjoy. Bitch, let me be clear about something, Sargon. Okay, if you if you want to, okay, I I don't I'm not upset about it, motherfucker. It's my media. You see the shit behind me? How many fucking billion dollar franchises have you created? That's fucking sweet too. There's Kratos up there. I'll tell you what. When you make something that has actually affected the culture, and with your team, then you can call it your media. Okay, bitch. But until then, what the fuck are you talking about? your media I, I trust me i was fucking making it i had tits and ass and god of war as far as the eye could see i had uh kratos uh banging twins at the beginning of that fucking game i literally at the beginning of uh not the beginning but somewhere in uh uh, uh twist metal black had a preacher fucking drowning a goddamn newborn baby fucking tell me uh, there's an agenda telling me what i can make trust me there's not in order to advance this agenda why wouldn't i stop right there and say, no, I'm not engaging with this agenda. I'm not carrying Don't it. engage with Why it. Why would I just continue it? Oh, oh, because someone might call me a name. Oh, God. Imagine being in 2015 when we're afraid of being called names, David. I, I don't care. I don't care. 
I'm just saying that if you go online, if you watch that video, it was literally uh, people being mean to LGBT folks simply because it was a game that they're never going to buy and they're never going to play. That's what I cared about. I don't care if you call me a name. The fuck do I care? Christ on a bike. And like we're literally... Christ, it doesn't matter, let's go. 28 seconds in, and already the entire premise of what you're doing looks foolish. And no, because you won't actually let me finish my point, bitch, which is, let's keep going, let's keep going. Hello, Dylan, good to see you, buddy. Input funny, I made a game, the last game I made was 2017. I am currently making a game, yeah, you say that Mario says, yeah. I'm also, by the way, currently working on games, and I can't tell you what they are, but for a company called Movie Games in Poland. And the last game they put out, well, the last game they put out was Gas Station Simulator, which is awesome. But the last game they put out before that was Lust from Beyond. It's literally a game, and this came out less than a year ago. It's literally a game where you can have Siamese twins fucking the same woman on a bed. It's got orgies, it's got blowjobs, it's got sex mini games. That you actually literally sit there and try to put your dick in the woman in the right rhythm. I assure you, uh, the agenda didn't exist then and doesn't exist now. Absolutely foolish. And I, I say this, right, as someone who quite likes you, I have enjoyed your channel for quite I realize I'm going off on a run now. I like you too, Sargon. You can kiss Kratos. He loves you. I love you so much, baby. Look, man, I like spirited debate. I don't I don't know you personally as long as you haven't hurt anybody. Well, wait a minute. That's different. That's different. Jackie Chan of, you know, the Cincinnati Chan says Neil Druckmann said he has an agenda. Facts. Neil Druckmann gets to have an agenda. He is the creator. If, 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 if there's if Nafisa Tung gets to have an agenda, anybody who sits behind a computer or an artboard or a movie camera gets to sit there and say, this is my vision. Just like Kurt Cameron and Scott Baio have an agenda. It's not my fucking fault that most of the people that, that, that you know, hate all this shit are people that, uh, you know, tend to be, you know, C-level has been creators. Fuck. You know, uh, maybe maybe all these fucking red state, you know, shit kickers should stop picking on the band kids and the drama kids and actually become those kids with them. And they would grow up to be movie directors and writers and shit like that. But, you know, I mean, if Neil Druckmann has an agenda, so what? Neil, you know, talk, Neil has a right to write his own games. Neil Druckmann's last two games, last three games has sold over 20 million copies each. <laughs> Why can't he? I don't understand. You think this guy, uh, what's his name, Sir, Sir, Sard, Sod, he has an agenda, he is, but his channel, I would defend his right to have it. But I quite like you, and I quite like... No, 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 guest of Gregory House. Gregory, listen, man. Gregory says, you just said like 10 minutes ago there wasn't an agenda. There's not an agenda from on high that gets filtered down through the executives that read these books and they say, you must do this, Neil Druckmann. The only agenda at Sony, honestly, is money. But beyond that is, what is the vision of the team? The team can have an agenda. The director can have an agenda, sure. But that's, I mean, that's, that's got nothing to do with anything. I mean, every anybody who creates anything has an agenda. Um, I don't deny, I don't know about Naughty Dog. I can't speak to Naughty Dog. But I can tell you that I have seen that video you're talking about. And yes, Neil Druckmann, I think, has said something like, I want to put out more images in the world and ideas in the world that reflect women or gays or whatever as this. Great. What? What? So what? Why is that a problem? Um, yeah, exactly. Anime says uh, every single person has an agenda. Um, like your channel. And I've, I watch your stuff fairly regularly. And so watching you. this was just like, wow. You know, this is just such small-minded stuff. I don't mind if it's small-minded, but you need to educate me on why it's small-minded with specifics. I have to have specifics. Not that it's your job. Where it's just... It's it's wild watching you be in the grip of this ideology. The what? And then trying to justify oh. being in the grip of this ideology. And I can only assume it's because you live in California. Well, I don't live in California. Well, I was born in Alabama and I lived there for 18 years. And I saw black people, gay people, Jews. I saw a lot of people get the shit kicked out of them, sometimes literally more often than not metaphorically, because they didn't fall in line with what the normal 
people thought they should be. Uh, that's why I moved to California. California. And I think the people who live in California are basically mental. So anyway. Why are you making Superman gay? He's not. But let's, let's for the sake of this discussion assume he is, because some people think that. But his son is, or his son is by. Uh, Ricardo, you all knucklehead. I thought you already remember. Thank you, buddy. You know I appreciate that, man. Uh, why are you turning this character into a woman? Why, why is Batgirl going to be played by a black lady? Okay. They don't have a problem, they say, uh, if with characters. They just don't want the characters that are already what they are. Just leave those be. Right? We already know those. It's just bad storytelling. It's just bad writing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, A, it is. But it's all... I agree! I agree! I don't have a problem with it! Also, because I can see that they're trying to do something that I don't want them to do. Like, I don't... Well, A, don't buy their product, then. They don't... Owe, you don't owe you anything. But more importantly... That's not what we're talking about. I'm saying that if that's your main issue, great. But that's not what this game is. You don't know what this fucking game is. Probably just me. What can I do for you, good sir? I don't want them to debauch Superman. Like, I don't want them to sit there... Debauch? What does debauch mean? I think I know, but I'm going to look it up real quick. Because I want to make sure before I comment. I know what debauchery is. But is debauch a verb? Yes. Destroy or debase the moral purity. Okay, I gotta rewind that. You're telling me. Tell me. Like, I don't want them to debauch Superman. Like, I don't. How, how, how are they, um. First off, it's not Superman. Okay, let's be clear. It is Superman's son has come out as, uh, bisexual. Um, that's not Superman. Second off, why is it debauchery to be a homosexual? What, I don't. So Superman can fuck the shit out of Lois Lane. He can literally, in Frank Miller's Batman Dark Knight 3, I think, fuck Wonder Woman in the sky so hard it causes a sonic boom. That's okay. But Clark Kent and Lois Lane's son can express interest in the opposite and the same sex, and it's debauchery? Uh, okay. We don't have mods in chat right now. This is a, 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 a rando stream. I'll try to catch what I can. If I don't, I'm just going to make it members only chat. I don't want to do that because I know, you know, I'd like to have lots of different people's views. Um, but I can't, I can't, you know, I can't, I don't have any mods right now. It's, it's two in the morning here in San Diego. Don't sit there and tell me about Superman's sexual preferences. I just don't care. You okay, know. but, but so what? Then, then don't don't read it i mean what do you think this is do you think every piece of entertainment is created for you do you think that game that we are okf which is a terrible fucking uh a terrible fucking title uh do you think that game was created for you what are you talking about didn't he be saving the world rather than talking about whether he can take a dick up his ass no wow There's so much, my little friend, seriously, buddy, I have a gay brother, okay? I have a trans son. I have LGBT friends, okay? I also have straight as a rod friends in terms of just wasp, they're Christian, and they're straight, and they're sit all across the board, okay? You're, just look at the vitriol. It, take a dick up his ass. I don't think about gay people that way. Why do you? Why can't there are there are men or women? First of all, again, it's not Superman, but fine. There are men or women, but let's just take men, because you said dick up the ass. Um, and yeah, you can do that, of course, with women. I don't know. I've never understood the appeal of that because you get shit on your dick, and I I'm sorry, it destroys the mood. But anyway, the fact that that's where your mind goes. Right? Your mind does not go to, they're just these people that love each other who happen to be the same sex. Great. Who cares? Take a dick up the ass. Why would you even phrase it in such a way if you didn't have, I don't know what you have, but it seems you got some issues with the gay folks, sir. Is that not, shouldn't he be saving the world rather than. Okay, wait a minute though. Look at his face. So angry. Listen. So, okay, so let me get this straight then. You would prefer, because it's all, all, all of it's made for you. All of it's made for you. Um, Assad. It's not Assad. It's Sargon of Assad. Or a, it doesn't matter. Um, you would prefer that he also break up 
with Lois Lane because he should be saving the world, but that means what? He can't be with Lois? He can't be with Lana Lang? I mean, are you basically saying he should ultimately be an asexual being floating above the earth and all he does all day is, is save the earth? Which is fine, that's an interesting character, but that's not what Superman has been since he was created in what? 20, 36, 28? I don't know when he was created, back then. Um, and then this other person says in the chat, um, Franklin, which I don't think you read comic books, when these changes are made, the character being gay is their only characteristic. Uh, Jonathan Kent, who is his son, and Damian Wayne, who's Batman's, have had a series called like Superhero Sons or whatever. They've been characters for a while. He only came out as bisexual six months ago, four or five months ago. So the idea that he was created, here's what's funny. Here, here's what's funny. He was created and there was no talk of his sexuality, okay? Um, so there is a character there that has nothing to do with his sexuality. So what you're saying is wrong. But then on the flip side, you're saying, well, I don't want you to change characters and make them gay. Why don't you just invent new characters so it doesn't piss me off? that you're changing characters I know and love. Okay, well now you're complaining that they did that, which they didn't, but let's assume you were right. They created Superman's son and said, from the get-go, he's gonna be bisexual. I don't like that. The only thing about him is he's gay. It's like, well, what do you want other than to not have gays in your fucking stories? Because I think you're afraid what, the gay will rub off on you? That's what I think secretly is going on. Let me get Ricardo's super chat, then we'll move, move forward. Uh, I tried to demonetize this. You shouldn't even be able to do that because uh, I don't want to get in trouble with this shit. But who is this dude? Why do we care what he says? As And I'm always a member. I just don't have automatic renovation. Um, Ricardo, baby, you always have renovation with me that's automatic. I don't know what that means, but it sounds great. Um, he's a guy. He's a very well-known. I th I don't I don't want to even box him in and say he's right wing. I, I don't know him that well. I, I, I he's, he's like a pundit online, you know, you know, in that category of people who tend to be right wing folks, Ricardo, but I, I don't really, I've never watched much of his stuff before. Um, so that's what I know. Um, Talking about whether he can take a dick up his ass. Yeah, I guess. Is that not something we should be, isn't he meant to be like a, a shining example of morality to humanity? Okay, so let's be clear. I mean, if, 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 if this guy's argument is all based on the idea that anything that is LGBT is immoral and debauched then that's okay um that's okay that i mean i don't agree with you i think that's horrible but if you're basically saying that which it sounds like you are um then i can't help you i mean you know at, at that point you're saying any whether there's an agenda or not right any lgbt in media is pushing forward stories and introducing people to characters and ideas that you find problematic and abhorrent. Um, I mean, that, at that point, what am I supposed to do with that? I mean, okay. I mean, you have a right to your opinion. I would absolutely defend your right, uh, even though I think it's dumb. Uh, but you have a right to that opinion. But you're basically saying because you don't like it, there's an agenda? No, there's just people who have had enough of living in the closet and living in the shadows and not being proud of who they are and not putting themselves in their art. And they've said, yeah, fuck you, we're going to express ourselves. Um, you don't have to buy it, man. Just don't. I, mean, I doubt you read Superman anyway. I do, though. Um, Is that not... What, no, no, it's about whether he likes to lick puss or suck dick, right? That's what we're talking about now. Great. Who put this thought in your head, David? Why is that an appropriate thing for you to talk about? What, who, who do you think is pulling these strings, David? All right, fine. Well, this last week, Monday, I think it was, uh, when Sony dropped their state of play, I think it was Monday, uh, we have a piece of evidence to suggest. I'm sorry, Henry YouTube, really? We're gonna go there? Um, again, I love you, Darth Nugget, you know I do, but what you don't get to, I mean, you can, but I'm going to ignore it. I, I, I'm not going to ignore you. I like you. We're pals. But when you come in here like that other guy and say, no, there is a clear agenda in comics, you either have to be specific or I'm going to ignore it. Not from you, Darth Nugget. But I'm giving everyone else a heads up. Henry YouTube says it doesn't matter if the character's gay. It's just weird how they make it into PR for the product. It's commercializing sexuality. Where do you live that they don't commercialize sexuality? 
there's literally press right now all weekend long about how Marvel finally, and it's not the same sex stuff, Marvel finally has their first sex scene in The Immortals. That's commercializing sexuality. Almost every product you buy is sexualized in the ads. Every TV show that you write um, is, is, uh, th- th- that you watch has, is, 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 is sexualized for the most part, right? The idea, the idea that uh, you're going to call it out on the, 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 the LGBT side, it's everywhere, man. Um, which is what we knew all along is that a meaningful percentage of the people who Aqualad, Robin and Superman all came out this year. Well, Aqualad did and Superman is not gay. Superman's son is bisexual and uh, Lobo's daughter is a lesbian. Um, And Robin, I don't know which Robin there's like 50 Robins, but okay. So out of a, out of a cast of 300 heroes, there's a handful of them that are gay. That probably fits in the, in the, percentage of 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 real life anyway float that line of bullshit mega cannon says since when is man loving the average it's propaganda propaganda for what it it, 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 it's just storytelling about people in the world all right i gotta get back to this i'll I'll get to the chat i promise you i will but i don't have a problem with diversity Uh, just, just don't change the characters you've already done it's bad storytelling I'll get, well, oh, fuck, I, I gotta read the chat. Darth Nugget says, yes, but his son is taking the mantle of Superman while Superman is off planet. Yes, but I thought what you guys were complaining about was you don't have a problem with gay characters in your fiction. It's the fact that you don't want the characters that you grew up loving, that you like as defined, gender bended or turn gay or straight or whatever. And so that's not what's happening. Jonathan Kent is Superman's son. Jonathan Kent is a bisexual. That is a new character or a character that has never addressed their sexuality before. So you should be okay with it because that's what you guys, that was the deal you guys made, right? Um, Oh, I've got a problem with diversity because diversity is a loaded code word. I don't have a problem with people of other races or (laughs) genders or whatever is in games, obviously. But you clearly do if you can't talk about Superman in any other way than you talked about him or his son. But the term diversity is not simply some neutral, ideologically unloaded word. No, 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 no. This is a shibboleth, David. Are you for diversity? And if you say, well, not really. I don't know what that means. Then you're part of the problem. If you say, of course, I'm, of course I'm pro-diversity. I love diversity. And they say, ah, okay, you're one of the team. This is how we know you're one of ours. And this is why you're like, oh, well, they, they, they say that, but this is bullshit. David, it's not bullshit. Right? It's bullshit. I, I have proof of it right in front of me in the chat. I have Darth Nugget literally saying to me that I don't have a problem with gay folks in media. It's just when they change it. And I'm going, well, they didn't change it. It's his son. Oh, well, I don't like that still because now he's doing the role of Superman. Yes, but he's not Superman. He, he, he's not Superman. So I'm sorry, but there's proof of it in this very chat. A cod, a cod. They just don't want some radical leftist fucking with their stuff. That's it. What stuff? Jonathan Kent? Are you, have you even read a comic with Jonathan Kent? We're not talking about Superman. We have evidence, more evidence to suggest that that's horseshit. Um, and I think we all knew it was horseshit. <laughs> you don't know who you're talking about. You're talking about random accounts on the internet. You're- yeah, well, that yes. And in the video that you're going through... That's literally what I'm showing you is accounts on the internet. I'm not saying you, although you probably do, but I'm not saying you feel that way. Oh yeah, we've got evidence to suggest this horseshit. No, David, yes. this, you, you don't have any evidence to suggest anything. This is just what you want to believe. You just want to believe this because this confirms you in your current worldview. Oh, it's not that a bunch of radical leftists are pulling my strings and fucking everything that I love up. Oh no, 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 it's not that. It's that those people over there are the problem. That's it. That that's what this is, David. That's what this. You, what, you, what, again, because uh, he's not offering any specifics. It drives me crazy. Um, I'm literally showing you evidence in the comments of the video that you're watching that there are people out here that have claimed 
to not have a problem and then they do have a problem i mean i i don't i can't help you with that at that point i mean you saying i don't have evidence is not proof that i don't have evidence you're just saying it i mean it's like you know what kind of tactic is that um and it's embarrassing no right? my friend that's not what's embarrassing in this game last night, uh, some horror game. It, it was kind of cool, and, and and I was chatting, I was streaming it, and somebody's asking me about the uh, trailer f that Sony just put out for this game. Uh, what's it called? We Hello are Doge. OFK, okay, which is this indie pop kind of. I don't know what the game is. They, they, it was it was kind of this is like dialogue heavy. It kind of feels very much like a. Uh, I mean, here it is right here. It feels very much like a. I mean, it's got the Life is Strange vibe, but the gameplay, who, who, who's really to say at this point? I, I don't fucking know. Here's, here's you know, here, here's some shots from the, the thing. I and mean, it's probably like mini games, and it's like it's like five episodes, and, and, and apparently it's semi-autobiographical, and there's a real band called We Are OFK, blah, 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 blah. So he's asking me about this trailer, and he's like, what do you think? And I'm like, I don't know, I thought it looked kind of boring. I thought the art style was really cool, but it's just not my kind of game. But Yeah, it looks shit, right? It looks. I didn't say it looks shit. I said it's not my kind of game, just so you know self-indulgent it looks like some crap that an sjw makes because they want to sit there and talk about themselves rather than tell you an interesting story and give you an interesting gameplay experience it i mean every creative product consciously or unconsciously is the result of the people who are controlling the creative in this case the director and the writer of this story expressing something they care about okay just because it's something that you find problematic and troubling a cod which is fine don't play it but you know there's a lot of people who have problems with violence in video games don't play them there was an entire group in utah that had a problem with sex and titanic so the the rental company literally cut the sex scenes out of jack and rose having sex in the car and rented that out to their customers versus just going don't watch titanic it's not for you i i, and I don't think this guy's i'm not i'm not trying to be silly and mean and, and sound like i'm giving him a compliment but i don't i think the guy is clearly intellectual and self-aware enough that i don't think he really is sitting there going everything that gets created needs to be acceptable to me um i i i don't think that's what he's saying i i don't think he actually there's no way he believes that but it's like every every piece of uh uh entertainment is is filtered through the creators i mean that's why you probably love what you love and hate what you hate but are you going to argue for their ability to express that um Again, it's massively solved. No, Vessel says the problem is if you don't play them, you were called racist. What? Who cares? If I, I, I'm, I'm literally telling you, as woke as people like you would say I am, the only reason I will play this game is if it gets great reviews, if it gets terrible reviews and I want to stream it, or because I want to support my friend and my colleague Nafisa, who I think is just a crackerjack hell of an artist, who is the art director on this. But... I didn't play the new Life is Strange. Don't don't fucking tell me. I mean, seriously, what 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 aren't you made of stronger stuff? The fact that if you don't play a game or see a movie and someone calls you a racist, you're gonna. I mean, okay, then they're a fucking idiot. But who gives a shit? Obsistic. It's about someone else's agenda. It's not about you. you did you see the Did you see the Black Trans Lives Matter T-shirt? It's about ideology it's about how is what you're doing any different nafisa and her crew are doing it through a video game you're doing it and i'm doing it th through a youtube channel but you have a right to come on youtube and express your views and your ideological positions of things just like they do just like people have a right not to watch your channel or watch my channel um I don't know. I mean, it, am I, you know, uh, uh, help me with this because it do, doesn't it sound like everything he's saying is this has to be from my side. This has to be something I'm interested in or it's a, a problem, right? Ricardo says this game is not for me, but it is for someone that matters. And there's plenty of games for me, right? Yeah. I mean, look, man, I mean, I, uh, life on hard mode you have to be specific again i wish some of you guys would have gone to a good school 
where they taught critical thinking. Life on Hard Mode says, Jaffe finally getting called out for his hypocrisy. I need specifics or you're not really going to be part of the discussion. You can say that, but how am I hypocritical? Um, but yeah, Ricardo, it's, it, it would only be something I would want to play, but I agree. There are going to be kids out there and, and people out there that see this and go, that's me. That's my friends. I feel seen. And to act like that's not a big deal. The only people I've ever seen that act like that's not a big deal are the people that are represented in media all the goddamn time. Um, presenting a kind of religious worldview. It's not about you as the consumer having a good time. It's not about you as the player. Neither is Schindler's List. Don't go see it. Not every game is a piece of fluff entertainment. It's not for you. And that's okay. Having a good time. It's not about speaking to you and trying to actually impart to you a human experience because that would take the audience into consideration, right? If you're trying to share a human experience with someone, you have to know something about them and you would have to appeal to something about them to try and get them on the same page as you in order to then say, right, we can share an experience. No, 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 this is different. This is about being preached at. This is about being told this is what you should think. Maybe. Or maybe it's a group of people that believe this and live this and this is their truth. My son today just came home. He texts me today and he says, Dad, can I buy a book? Him and his uh, sister were at the, the mall or whatever, the outside mall. Uh, I don't know what they're even called anymore. Like the, it's not a strip. It doesn't matter. They were at the, at the mall. Um, and I said, yeah, sure, go ahead, buy it. And he brings it home. I'm like, oh, what book did you buy? Because he doesn't read a lot. Neither one of them do, which drives me crazy. And he's like, oh, it's a gay book. I'm like, what the fuck is a gay book? But it was a graphic novel about a geek in high school and uh, uh, a rugby player. And somehow the geek in high school and the rugby player, I don't know if they know they're gay or one of them does, but they ultimately find each other and it's a love story, comedy, whatever. Well, he wanted to read that. That's his life experience. That's his friend's life experience, right? It doesn't exist for you, Sargon. It's, it, it, it doesn't exist for me. It's clearly a gay person or somebody on the LGBT. I mean, it doesn't have to be, but it clearly seems to be somebody from the LGBT community saying, I'm going to tell a story that I think speaks to me, and I hope there's enough of an audience out there that I can make a living doing it. And, and that's it. What else, what else do you need? I mean, why, why, I mean, it, it almost sounds like you're arguing for entertainment that can only live if it has been put through a filter of, you know, we need to figure out the top 10 things that the majority of humans like, and that has to be only that exist in our entertainment. And that exists, by the way, there's a lot of movies that are made that way, but you know, um, and uh, this doesn't appeal to you at all, does it, David? You look at I, I thought Life is Strange uh, was a really well-made game, but it was a little too slow for me, so. This looks, this looks shit. But, uh, but, but you saw the Black Trans Lives Matter t-shirt as well, didn't you, David? I did, and, I, that's, and somebody asked me about it on my stream, which is literally what I said about five minutes ago. And I also then saw all of the anger towards it, which I'm thinking I'm about to show you on the internet. And that is why I made the video, not because the game interests me. And I said, the game doesn't interest me. Uh, you know, I didn't like most of what they showed uh, in State of Play the other day. I was just not, not, it really wasn't for me, you know. Isn't that weird though? Isn't that weird? Like you're the creator of one of the most popular video games ever. If anyone's got a pulse, a uh, finger on the pulse of what it is <laughs> that gamers like no. to play, it's surely someone like you, but most of the video games that you're seeing coming out now aren't for you. Just who are they for? I, it, you're, I, I just, it's so disingenuous and it really bothers me. I think it bothers me that so many people just, I mean, I, let's just take for a moment what he's saying right now. He is trying to is conflate the proper verb. I think it is. Sometimes I use it wrong. If I am, you'll know what I mean. I apologize. He is trying to conflate the fact that I said at state of play, what they showed wasn't really for me with a sense of proof or evidence that isn't that what I've been saying, they're making these games that aren't for gamers. And I'm like, dude, that's, 
got nothing to do with anything. The state of play that Sony showed on whatever, the 28th of October, was all about third-party games. A lot of them were indie games. Um, and a lot of those indie games, just like indie films, tend to be smaller, more personal takes on subject matter. Okay, my one of my favorite games of the year is unpacking literally about a woman who is unpacking at various stages of her life. Okay, if I would have seen that in a trailer, I would have said that's eh, probably not for me. It looks kind of boring. One of my favorite games, certainly of the year, maybe of all time. Um, so the fact that this little exchange he's having with the camera and specifically to me, if you're not really thinking about it and you're just inclined to believe him because you do like his political views or his views on culture or whatever, it would sound like what I'm saying is, I don't like games. He's painting me as a guy who's going, I don't like games today. They're not made for me. See, Jaffe, isn't that proving my point? Because these are games that have an agenda that aren't for gamers. I'm like, no, I'm literally talking about the state of play that Sony did a couple of weeks ago. I'm not talking about the one before they did that was Deathloop and Horizon. I'm not talking about the one before that that was God of War. Um, I'm literally talking about um, that one state of play. And in that, you know, uh, I, I just, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know why that would be something this guy thinks I'm saying. But anyway, here we go. Cool. Who are they for? What are they for? Like, it's really weird, isn't it, how the gaming industry is just crap? Like, there's so but it's not crap. It's fucking wonderful. There are games for so weird. It's like you don't even know what you're talking about, man. And I'm not trying to be a dick to you. But look, let me just show you. I mean, let me just fucking show you on my screen. This is what I'm playing right now. Forgive me, Father. It's a really fun shooter, boomer shooter, that's all about um, uh, uh, Lovecraft and violence and horror. Trust me, I perked up when I saw that game. This is just Steam. I'm not going to load up Xbox and all that shit right now. Um, but the idea that all of this stuff is the kind of games that are out there, look at the variety in games right now. To say that to say that this is something, I mean, SWAT dudes and Psychonauts 2, I don't know what, I know what this is, it's not my kind of game. Uh, a war game, this is like a horror card game, which is great, by the way. Obviously, Elden Ring, you know what that is. Um, this is literally a game which is amazing. I heard it's buggy, so I'm not going to buy it yet. That you get to play in the fucking Civil War and you can pick whatever side you want to be. That's right up your alley, pal. The idea, you know, war, hitmen, monster trucks. The I, Honey, I joined a cult. The idea that everything in here is, is, I mean, I don't know if you play games that much, man. It's There's so much variety out in game look at crypto girls this it's a 18 plus total porn game is the number one well, that's the let's see what the top sellers are forza age of empires elden ring battlefield back for blood guardians where are you seeing what you think you say you're seeing you're not you just don't i don't think you follow the industry man um much get like I, what what do i see people talking about video game wise these days what's everyone hyped about what's that uh, let's see. I would say, I mean, people are excited about Forza right now. They're excited about Halo. They're excited about Horizon. They're excited about the new God of War. Uh, Unpacking is getting some heat on it, which is nice to see. Um, Call of Duty came out Friday. Eh, I don't think anybody's that excited, but it'll probably still sell really well. Um, so I think there's a lot of things people are excited about. Let's. What's your point? They're hyped about a fucking Diablo 2 reskin. No. I mean, I dread to think how many years, how many hours, well, probably years, actually, uh, how many hours of play I put into Diablo 2. And everyone's hyped about a reskin. And then... What, but, but, again, you can't just... I mean, you can. It's your channel. But you can't just say things... I don't. Here's what I'll say. If you're watching this and you're a fan of this guy, and this guy seems like a perfectly intelligent fellow, but in the same way that you're going to hold me, as you should accountable to things that I say on my streams um, and my videos. And hopefully there's enough history, if you've watched my shit, where I do go back and do retractions and I say, I'm sorry, I messed up. I didn't know that. Thank you for educating me. I, I don't have to be the big brain in the room. I'm just out there looking for interesting conversation and truth, okay? But if you're going to hold me to that standard, you got to hold this guy to that standard, right? And I know this guy's like a million channel guy and he's a big ticket and all that. That's great. But 
the guy literally is saying the game everybody is talking about is Diablo 2. Well, it's not. First of all, it, it, they are talking about it. it. It premiered in the UK, I think, at number five. But, you know, that's, you know, it, it's not it's not the it's not uh, uh, FIFA. It's not Guardians of the Galaxy sales. It's, you know, people are excited about it, but it's not something that's like Grand Theft Auto 3 when it first came out. But this guy's presenting it that way. And as he presents it that way, if you don't question him, if you just assume he's right, He's building these blocks of his argument that really aren't based on truth. Um, and I think you should have a problem with that. V the other day is like, hey, Age of Empires 4 is out and it looks great. What is it? It's basically a reskin of Age of Empires 2. And uh, but it's you know, there's a couple of small changes, but it's basically the same. And I was I played it and I enjoyed it, right? But that's not innovation. Games these days suck. Let's be real. No, they don't suck. You just have to know where to look, man. Unpacking is brilliant. Severed Steel is brilliant. Um, Dwarf Romantic is brilliant. Trust me, there are a lot of great innovative games. What you're talking about specifically, and again, you're talking about things that you don't really understand, um, which is fine. You don't have to, but I hope your audience knows that you're not bringing much experience to this. Um, which, again, I'm not saying that like a back. I'm not saying that like I'm trying to get a little poke in. I'm saying that literally. It's like, and again, I don't stick to things I know, but when people tell me I'm wrong, I'm like, oh shit, I didn't know that, right? The games a lot of people talk about when you say games are shit today, I don't necessarily agree with that, but a lot of these are games that are big budget titles that cannot afford, according to the people who foot the bill, to take the kind of chances that you're talking about. But to say that uh, games are shit today uh, I just, I, I don't know what evidence you have. You're pointing to specific games that you might think are shit. But, I mean, you know, again, man, I mean, play uh, play Unpacking, man. There's literally a game that came out this week that does some of the best in-game storytelling I have ever seen in a video game ever. It doesn't mean it's the world's best video game. It's got some problems. But, I mean, there's a lot of innovation happening in games, man. Um, inscription, right? Same as films. Films these days suck. TV shows, comics. Our culture is producing shit media. And it's We're in a golden age of television. I don't know what you would like to see. Um, Heretic says, Jaffe, is he not on YouTube where there is so much diversity? It is almost insane. There is content for everyone. I agree with that as well. And gaming is the same. That's right. That's right. No one is play unknown. Oh, fuck off. Unknown. You, you, un unknown. You and I have already had words. I've told you if you can be a troll, I don't mind, but you got to be measured. But if everything you say is an insult, it's whenever I see your stupid little avatar name, like just then I'm, I'm not, you're not even in the conversation, which is fine. But I hope this is better for you than actually being part of the conversation because that's all you're going to get. It's because the gatekeepers of this media, the people in control of it, are ideological and self-absorbed. They don't care about the evil people who are currently playing old games that have been reskinned. Like, you know this is true, David. I, you can't say, oh, that tactic infuriates me. You know this is true, David, is, is okay. Oh, I, I, Doge says I'm giving this guy way too much credit. Well, he's a like famous pundit on the right. Why would I not? Clearly, when you've got a million views on your YouTube channel, people must think, and I, and I don't think people are idiots, I think he must, he must be saying something that resonates that has some truth in it. Um, but, uh, uh, but, but anyway, sorry. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, 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 don't, I don't agree that television is bad. Uh, Vessel says, golden age of television. I don't know, Jaffe. Everyone is leaving cable for a reason. Yes, and they're going to streaming. They're going to Hulu and Amazon and Netflix originals and uh, HBO Max originals to look at the shows that have come out in the last 10 years and say that we are not in a great um, age of storytelling, long-form storytelling. Again, it's subjective, but I think most people you would ask would say, oh, yeah, no, we're, we're, we're in a really good time right now. Um, Reskin, reskin, reskin. Nothing about mechanics and games that have been remade. Nothing about mechanics and games. Oh, are, well, there are plenty of uh, updates to those games, but I'm not sure what you mean. Ecom says, Jaffe, we know Sargon isn't a huge gamer. I don't know the guy. 
he's taking a small portion of the games industry to prove his point. It's like making the point Hollywood movies are trash. Right. I don't, I don't agree with that either. Um, and then he specifically goes to this part. He brings up this part. Uh, the, uh, I mean, the whole thing is obviously very, if you look at it, it is very diverse. Uh, it's very female centric, if not female only, um, in terms of the character. And it ain't speaking to you, is it? It ain't speaking to you because it turns out that men and women are different. Anyway, go on. Characters and what? What not? Different uh, races and whatnot. And then you get to this part where they're. In oh God, different races. Ooh, David, right? Like, I, I, I personally fucking love Warhammer. I, I really enjoy. Of I, course, of course you do, because you're from the UK. No one under. I at least get Doctor Who. Doctor Who's fantastic. War, no one understands Warhammer, but let's keep going on. That's the real debate. Really enjoyed um, Gladius, right? Well, I'm a Gladius. This is just a, you know, 4X turn-based strategy game. I don't know what it is. And I happen to like playing the Tyranids. I'm just sat there going, well, where's my representation, Games Workshop? You know, I'm not represented anyone. They're like, well, you can play the Space Marines. It's like, well, I'm not a seven-foot-tall buff. Dude, listen. Jackie Chan, I'm 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 here for you, baby. I'll, I Jackie Chan says, "Problem with you, Jaffy is I love that phrase. I love it from the movies. Problem with you, Willie is that's from Indiana Jones. Problem with you, Jaffy is that you are surrounded by like-minded subscribers, and they yeah you, know, you would be surprised and don't understand alternate points of view. You also deny facts. Again, please be specific. I don't deny facts. Give me some facts. I don't deny alter, alternate points of view, but you have to address them. What you can't do is make a blanket statement and expect to win a point in this discussion. I don't know what you're talking about, but I want to speak to this representation thing. Um, look at the guy. He's a relatively good looking white. I assume straight, maybe closeted based on what he said about Superman who talks about gay people that way. If you don't already have some fascination with him, but that said he's a white straight, relatively good looking dude. You're represented everywhere. Okay. I'm not as represented as you are, but let's assume I get 80% of the representation that you get, okay? I'm with you. I don't walk around my life feeling I need to be represented in movies and games and things like that, okay? It doesn't bother me. But what you're saying is when people that do say, like Kamala Khan in Miss Marvel, who is a teenage Muslim superhero, or a lot of black people who say finally Black Panther as in the movies meant something to us, right? To say, you're basically saying they're all lying. All I can do is go, oh, well, why would you lie about that? Yeah, I think that's great. I can, all I can tell you is, you know, I was, I was, even though I'm agnostic and atheist, I was raised Jewish and there was a time when I think, and I, I still love Christmas to this day, and I love Christmas specials, even though I think it's all horseshit. Um, but when there was like a show on that was like, it was a Hanukkah show. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, or when I found out Ben Grimm was Jewish in the Fantastic Four, I was like, oh, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty cool. Um, I, I wasn't like, oh, now I can read the Fantastic Four. But as a guy who's represented pretty often in terms of who I am and my makeup, I still got a little bit of dopamine. Like I like that. So you can say that all these people that are minority groups that claim representation is valuable. They're just full of shit. But again, I mean, you have that right. I'd support your right, but I don't see any evidence of that. Um, I love Christmas. I'm not religious. Yeah, no, I, I think I'm not, I'm not, I think, Religion's horrible, but it's a it's a fun holiday season. Uh, Fuby says he's not good looking. Look at him; he's bigger than Aloy, <laughs> Aloy, whatever her name is. I don't look. Do I look at this? Yeah, I think he's a good looking dude. I don't think he's like you know Tom Cruise or who's like the best. Uh, uh, what's his Idris Elba? I think was the last sexiest man. But I can look at a guy and go, okay, if a woman was looking at a picture of him and a p picture of me, and she'd probably go for this guy. He's he's in better shape. Um, he's more symmetrical. He doesn't have the big kind of honker nose. Come on now. I'm not saying he's the best looking guy in the world, but you know, can't you, can't you look at a dude and even though you're straight go, yeah, it's a good looking guy. So what? Um, in space Marine, am I? Oh, I have to play. In I did not say 
minorities cannot relate to Batman and Superman. This is what I don't understand. Mega Cannon says, so Jaffe is saying, like, where are you? Come on, man. Are you really? Come on, man. Think about what I'm saying. Think about what I'm saying. Um, Mega Cannon says, this is the problem. Mega Cannon says, so Jaffe is saying that minorities can't relate to Batman and Superman. Where did I say that? I didn't say that. Um, just like I can relate to Wonder Woman, that I, I can relate to Black Panther. It's not about that, man. <laughs> Fuck you, Bacon Magma. It's not about that, man. Um, to people who are represented everywhere, they don't notice. Then they get mad when someone else, because it stands out like a sore thumb to them. Right, that's my, that's my point. You can't make a hit without some duds. Don't know of one successful person. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay, let's keep going. You're real God. Why, he, why does it matter about, listen, who cares? People in the chat are talking about the way this guy looks. I'm just saying he's a better looking dude than I am. That's all I'm saying. Why does it matter? What does it matter? Because apparently I can't play something unless I personally, a fat neck beard, am represented in it. Like, if I'm not in it, I can't enjoy it. That's the way these fuckers think, David. I don't you know, think most that. Most of the games I play, there aren't humans in them, or if they are, you know, they're not like like regular people or anything. And so I'm just sat there thinking, what kind of lunatic is obsessed with representation? Well, I can tell you, actually. It's a chap called Charles Lawrence. Have you ever looked him up, David? You've never heard of him, have you? Charles no. Lawrence the mm Third, -hmm. right? He is one of the sort of key scholars of critical race theory. Okay. And it's him that seems to have been the progenitor of the idea of representation as being important because they view there being power in narratives narratives there is, there is power in narratives but keep going set people's perceptions of reality and so yes. his view was to essentially flood the airwaves with constant left-wing radical left-wing narratives pr promoting equality diversity inclusion blah 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 but not things that speak to like the regular human experience, right? Not things that speak to uh, the actual person, but are projections of other people's Fuck you, view of the world. Okay, so again, I mean, I'm not doing this to be dramatic. My, I literally have a headache. Um, it's late. Um, so, again, the idea that um, sorry, I'm 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 losing focus. Let me let me see what he said. I did want to comment. Diversity, inclusion, blah 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 blah. Oh right, okay. So this guy, no, he's right. I've never heard of this guy, um, but there's a lot of people who have agendas but do you have evidence linking his book or thesis or whatever he wrote to um the fact that he has ingrained himself within entertainment culture and i don't mean just like oh people have read the book i mean where show me a memo like i said show me an email from the heads of sony playstation show me an email from netflix saying we have to do this right that that's that otherwise you're just pointing out people who have a view that potentially is pretty radical i i need to read his stuff but so what people can have radical views but where are you seeing that you know it's almost like you're saying just because this guy has a view Therefore, my argument that this view is is indicative of all of entertainment or most of entertainment is true. And I'm like, you know, my uh, my kids, when they were really young, only wanted to see cartoons. Well, if I listen to them, nobody I would say the only movies that are good are cartoons. I mean, why? I don't understand where you're getting the evidence that just because somebody wrote this, it, it 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 has sway. Right. I don't get it. But diversity, I'm sorry, I do, th I, 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 and by the way, even if he did write and sell the idea that diversity matters, I am not saying I think diversity matters because this guy told me, even though I've never heard of him. I'm saying, who am I to tell my son who went and bought a gay book today? He called it a gay book, but a book about the homosexual experience, a graphic novel. Who am I to, he didn't buy one about two straight people getting together. He bought one about gay people getting together. Well, 
to him it matters, right? Um, my brother, who is a gay guy, uh, he stayed at our house for a while and he would always, he had his own Netflix, you know, account and he would always watch a lot of gay dramas. Well, clearly that was important to him. Um, I've heard black kids talk about how Black Panther, I've heard women talk about how Captain Marvel is important. Who are you or I to tell them that they're what? They're just wrong. You just know better than the people who are literally telling you that are these groups Really? I mean, doesn't that doesn't that give you pause, Sargon of Akkad, that you you just suddenly know better than literally the groups themselves that are these people saying um, that this is we like seeing ourselves reflected? Um, Life on hard mode says just don't get mad when the quote K books don't sell well and call everyone homophobic. I never have. Um, I never have. Um, all right. But not things that speak to like the regular human experience. Right? Well, th oh, right. This I disagree with too, by the way. Um, you know, um, uh, you know, again, when Wonder Woman comes out of the trench in no man's land and walks across no man's land, I was, I, I didn't just tear up. I was crying in the movie. I don't have to be a woman to have that human experience, that sense of going, people underestimate you, whether you're the, the most cis, straight, white, male, Christian, whatever, whatever you need to get to check all the boxes of, 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 you know, your culture that you think is normal and good for you. What, whatever you are, the human experience, good storytelling transcends specifics. Okay, so the specifics really ultimately don't matter. They matter for the individuals to get them into the theater or make them feel something that they can relate to. But a good story after that, you don't have to be a 10 year old little boy to appreciate Elliot's longing at the end of E.T. You don't have to be um, uh, uh, a slave who joined the army in the Civil War to appreciate the suffering and bravery of Denzel Washington and glory. Right. You don't have to be a black guy living in slave times to appreciate the the love and the 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 the, the drive that love and caring for another person will give you to appreciate the sacrifices and risk that Django makes in Django Unchained. Um, the idea that the human experience cannot be taken in by people who are not of the race or sexual orientation or religion uh, of the main characters of the story is ridiculous. It's fucking ridiculous. Not things that speak to the actual person, but are projections of other people's view of the world. I don't expect you to understand that, David. I don't even expect you to look into it because, I mean, you know, there's no way you're going to. But uh, I just want you could offer me a link and say, here's what I'm talking about. But I would expect the same in return for you. I would expect you to explain to me evidence or sightings where someone who's not the religion or the race or whatever of a character in a book or a story can't be affected by that person. I mean, I, I don't think that exists. You need to be aware that, again, all of this was done consciously it was done deliberately i don't like again your way of, i don't like your way of arguing man i i just yeah to say to say all of this was done consciously and deliberately you've offered you can show a paper you can show a book you can show that there's an individual that had a desire to do this but that doesn't prove anything other than there's an individual out there that may have published a book that espouses this philosophy. But where are you getting the connective tissue between that and these creators going, that is what I have to do based on, you know, whatever. Sure, another critical race theorist, key author in the, uh, in the corpus of critical race theory, uh, specifically called this a Gramscian war of position. They can't just overwhelm our institutions or our society 
because what we had was too well integrated. And so they were like, right, okay, we're gonna have to spend our time breaking these things down. And now you're talking about whether Superman takes it up the fucking ass. They've won, they've done very, very well. They knew what they were doing and you're a useful idiot for them. Sorry, David, do carry on. In the band. What? Again, it's not Superman, but let's, for the sake of argument, let's assume it's Superman. Let's assume Clark Kent Superman in the next issue becomes as gay as the day is long black Jewish woman how have they won what do I care is it a good story is Superman cool that's all I care about there's a great character by the way if you really want to talk comics called Naomi and Naomi, I think, is a straight black teenage girl who got superpowers, written by Brian Michael Bendis, who obsesses over Superman. Um, and it's fucking fantastic, by the way. If anybody who's watching is interested in uh, 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 a, a comic, um, it's fucking phenomenal. Darth Nugget says, it's as much Superman as the Falcon is Captain America. Yeah, but Captain America has, has traded uh, uh, with different people for a long time. Sam Wilson is not the first guy to be Captain America. There have been others. Um, and the idea, and, and, and uh, it's, okay. Um, and and uh, where's this person wearing this? They're like, what about the t-shirt? And I knew what they meant, because I knew when I saw it, people were gonna have a shit fit, but I was just waiting for people to say something. Uh, here, here's a character in the game who's, I guess, one of the singers, and they're wearing a uh, Black Trans Lives Matter uh, t-shirt, right? Yeah, yeah, they are. Let me just see if I can, uh, did I, did I, did I pull it up? Oh, yeah, I did, right? Go and read an essay by Kimberly Crenshaw written in 1989 called Demarginalizing the Intersection of Race and Sex, a Black Feminist Critique of Anti-Discrimination Doctrine, Feminist Theory, and Anti-Racist Politics. This, David, is the genesis, the inception of the term intersectionality. I know you don't know anything about this, right? But the reason this is important is because this is why we're talking about Black trans lives. Don't know whether I have to point this out, David, but that's a really fucking small percentage of the population. Like it, it, it may be, but at least one of the people who are making the game is an Asian uh, uh, lesbian. She Asian lesbians, and the last she told me she was an, a lesbian Asian asexual. So let's just say that Asian asexual population, uh, lesbians... So like romantic, asexual, but no, romantic, lesbian, but sexual, asexual, whatever. Let's assume that that's like point point or point zero 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 two percent of the population. Well, guess what? She's the art director. She has a seat at the table and she has said, I would like to tell this story. I'm not saying this came from her, but if you look at the website, it's clear there's a lot of folks on that website that are either... Uh, fit within this category of people who take it up the butt or uh, uh, women who scissor or whatever, or people who are supportive of those people. Well, guess what, baby? They got a seat at the table. They got funding. They're going to tell their story. Okay. I don't think I would tell their story unless one of them was on the team and said, Hey, what, what, what about this, that, and the other, right? But what's wrong with them being able to tell their fucking story? Um, just because they're a small percentage, you know, uh, a lot of people tell their story. You think Taylor Swift writes a song and she, and she bases it on her life. Bruce Springsteen writes a song. He bases it on the things he's seen. He saw growing up in the town he grew up in John Mellencamp, whoever, I, I know you're younger than I am. And you're like, who the fuck are these people? But they're singers, man. They're singers. You, your constituency there is minuscule. I mean, the constituency of trans people is fucking minuscule anyway. Okay. But then black trans, why them? Why, why are they more important than Latino trans? They're not. Why? This is this defensive thing. Let me ask you guys in the chat real quick. The way this guy is talking, like if, if, you, were to, if, if, if you were an alien species watching and you had like a game and it's like, Put this guy's life experience up against what they're saying and match them. Like, oh, A goes to four and B goes to seven. The way this guy talks, you would be forgiven for assuming 
he lived in a world where there was no media that reflected his life that every day he woke up and watched TV and it was like the L word or it was like all this far left uh, LGBT stuff or it was all about Muslim people or whatever. It's like 95% of the entertainment uh, is about at least one character, the, the, the straight white male experience in the Western world. Why? What? Are you not happy until you get all of it? I mean, I, I don't understand why you care this much. Um, why are they more important than Jewish trans? They're things? not. Why is, where, okay, wh where, it, what just happened? Where am I saying they are? Like, can anyone point to me in this where I say they are more important? Mr. K, thank you, buddy. You know, I appreciate it. He says, I don't know what's happening. I just got here. Jaffe, are you going to private the stream? No, 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 I'm not. This one, this is, I'm not high on this one. This is straight up going, you know. Um, I, where can somebody please point to me? Where did I say they're more important than, than, than Jewish ones or Latino ones? Nowhere, but what? So there's a pecking order. So they can't wear that shirt because you have decided or stats have decided that the only way you can wear that shirt is if your people, uh, are X percent of the population based on the most recent data we have of the census. I mean, so let's just screen out all people who create art. Let's screen out all of their personal life experiences because you can't relate to it. I understand. Why, why are you excluding them? I'm oh, not. God, because what this is, right? This is all a very calculated... Is it because he has a British accent that a lot of you guys think he's smart? And again, I'm not saying he's not smart. You don't get to a million YouTube channel and you're a dummy. I don't, I don't like the quarterings views either, but the guy's a fucking hustler and he's smart. I don't mean a hustler like he's a grifter. I don't know anything about that, but he definitely motherfucker puts out like three, four, five videos a day. I'm not saying he's not a smart guy, but it's like, what is he? I mean, what he's literally saying isn't really making sense. Is it the accent? He did attempt to try and raise these marginal identities to positions of supremacy again read this essay i don't want to read the essay unless you can tell me do, let, let me let me just give you the win here on this uh sargon this essay could say every single thing that you're claiming and, and it wouldn't surprise me let's assume it does let's just go with that it does 100 percent. what i need from you is in indication proof that just because somebody wrote an essay in 1989, just because somebody wrote a book 10 years ago, two days ago, that that book has entered into the decision-making chambers of the vast majority of entertainment media. Because otherwise you're just pointing, yes, do I believe there might be somebody in the world that says black trans women can run this world better than anyone else. And I want to do everything I can to put black trans women in power. Yeah, I wouldn't surprise me. Just like there's people who think, uh, oh, you know, only white men can run America. God forbid we'd ever have a woman, you know, but that doesn't mean that when I used to create video games or I create videos or, or Corey Barlog or any of these people who are creating today, that doesn't mean that they have, you, you act like they have this, printed out and it's it's like leather bound with gold leaf pages and every day the team gets together and it's like let us read from kimberly crenshaw uh paragraph 26 sentences four through seven and everyone knows it because they have to memorize this of course in order to get the job i mean that's kind of what you're presenting and i'm like that's okay if it's real you've got yourself a hell of a cracker jack story there baby but you got no proof you're just saying this shit. It's insane. This is not new, and this is not, like, hidden either. It's just obscure because nobody wants to go and read a fucking 30-page essay. Yeah, it, come on, man. Don't fucking hurt your arm patting yourself on the back. You do the research, Sargon. You're the one that's really out there in the weeds dealing with this stuff, and the rest of us are just dumb mouth breathers that take what we're fed by the media. 
that's that's the role that's the that's the character you're playing that's okay you have a right to play the character but i hope at least some of your million fucking followers are able to discern the fact that just because you say something doesn't make it true there's a lot of things i've read there's a lot of essays i, I was a fucking english major go fuck yourself right it, it, it but but you know i could us i could point you to a lot of things that i've read that are uh, have ideas in them that I don't particularly like, but that doesn't mean that those ideas are dogma in the entertainment industry. I, I don't get it. Some intellectual from 30 odd years ago, but, uh, but it's not new and it's been done consciously to focus your attention. Where is the proof that it's been done consciously? Keep asking this guy this question. He hasn't said it yet. You can say it, Listen to me now, if you're watching this and you think this guy knows what he's talking about, I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. He may know what he's talking about, but doesn't he owe you proof that he does? Listen to how he says it, man. Listen, listen to this. He says it with such conviction that if you're not paying attention, you might be inclined to believe it. I don't, he could be right. He could say, oh, Jaffe, no, no, no. Didn't you read the expose in the New York Times or in Breitbart, whatever? I don't care what media group it is, where they literally have documents showing that people in video games have gotten this and they forced all their people to go through demarginalizing black feminist Kimberly Crenshaw training. But he just says this. Into, but it's not new and it's been done consciously. Where? To focus your attention Where? into ever more marginalized groups. Now, in this, Kimberly Crenshaw is doing it for black women. Right. right. So uh, black men had more attention p placed on them, uh, and white women had more attention placed on them. She was like, well, okay, well, if we, we take an intersection of this, black women, and we raise this to prominence, then we, we start arriving at what she considers, well, what the modern progressives. Again, progressive you're, all you're doing is expressing what these days. she's writing Does about. We, it's then, literally racial hierarchies. But the point that Kimberly Crenshaw is getting to here is that, look, I can raise black women's importance and, again, challenge the hegemonic narratives of the United States. Okay. And you can just keep more finely slicing this. And so we've arrived at black trans women. Okay, but let, let's stop for a moment. Let's assume for a moment, I mean, you can't, maybe you can, and I'm hoping you can, I'm, I'm hoping you can't because it would be terrible, but I'm hoping you can for the sake of knowing that you're not full of shit, which I don't think you are. I think you believe what you believe, but hopefully within this discussion, you will tie these papers that are obscure back to evidence that these papers are sort of shared around the, the, the video game industry in such a way that it uh, uh, forces people to create the way you think they're being forced to create. Um, that said, um, when I lost my train of thought, there's like six things happening. I know you guys are saying, oh, Jeffy, Sargon, Sargon is in the chat, which, yeah, I would love to talk to him if you want to call in. Um, I have, I don't have a call in number. I have a discord, but people call in through the, 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 the discord. So I, I don't know if that's something he wants to do, but he's more than welcome to. Um, if he has a discord, um, thank you, Mr. K. I appreciate that. Buddy. Um, he, he's invited. I mean, if he, if he's in the chat and he says, yes, I would like to come on to the show, I will send him a link to the discord and, um, you know, that would be great. Um, I don't let, let me know if that's here. I'll, I'll put the link in. If he wants to do it, I'll see him join the discord and we can have a discussion. Um, invite people one second, fellas. Um, no, 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 that's not what I want. I want this. Okay, I think this this will do it. Uh, okay, so I think um, even though what will happen is it'll put you into the Discord, Sargon, and say that you have to wait. Uh, I can just give you a private call once you're in the Discord, and I don't think you'll have to wait that uh, that amount of time. Yeah, take your time. Um, so. Okay, sorry. So anyway, what, what was I saying? I forget. While we're waiting, and I have my eye on the Discord, so... But, and Mr. K, thank you for pointing that out. Chat, thank you for pointing that out to me. Men. ...of the United States. Oh, right. So l let's assume he's right, though. 
Well, what's wrong with Kimberly Crenshaw saying, I would like to elevate women's status in the United States? I'm not saying that we're listening to her. I've never, I've never seen her. All right, there's this guy, Sargon. I think it's the real Sargon. So let me try to bring him in. Um, but so what is, what does that matter? Um, but okay, here we go. Let me, let me do my best to make this work. Um, okay. So if I say message, sorry, you guys. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, accept add friend. We're friends, Sargon. We're best buddies. Okay, so can I call you now? Let's see. Uh, I think I sent you... A, it, it, can, let, let me know, Sargon. It says, I'm in the Discord, but it's Sunday morning here. Give me 15 minutes. Yeah, take your time. That's fine. So we'll keep going through this. When you're ready, uh, uh, I will pull you in. That will be great. All right. Um, okay, here we go. So anyway, so I don't even understand why that's a problem. Let's keep going. And you can just keep more finely slicing this. And so we've arrived at black trans women. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't care. I just don't care. But why does it, why do you have to care? No one's at, where, are there people knocking at your door telling you you have to care? I don't care that you care. I do care about uh, groups of people, all people. And I'm glad that, that there are people who are able to make a game that expresses their views, but cool what why do you have to care um and i don't think i should have to uh, these you don't have to I, I i'm i'm you're not the first guy to say this there's people in the chat that are also saying this shit um where are you guys getting this impression that you are forced um to care i i, I don't understand where that's coming from i don't care if you care who cares i guarantee you uh, I could call Nafisa, who's the art director on this game, and I'd say, hey, there's this guy, this Sargon of a COD guy. He's got a pretty huge YouTube channel. He says he doesn't care about the messages in your book, We are in your uh, your game, We Are OFK. And I'm sure she'd say, I, I, I don't care that he doesn't care. Is it required? Are they going to come take your PlayStation away if you don't play this? I don't, where's, where are you getting this from? These are not a particularly important fixture in my life. Uh, not interested in the, in being in the media I'm in. Not that I, I care either way. Uh, it's just not something that bothers me. It what? clearly bothers you, but let's keep going. Why does it bother you? You know, why are you even thinking about this? Okay, I'm think. I'll tell you exactly why. I am thinking about this for two reasons. One is <laughs> yeah, Mario. One is that at a non-personal level. I, I'm, I know you're in England, but I'm a big First Amendment guy, okay? I'm a big freedom of expression guy. I'm a big let artists express whatever the fuck they want to express guy. And later in this video, or pretty soon in this video, you will see me scroll through the comments. And when I see the bile and hatred, that th this is not, even though I, I don't have a problem with it, this is not God of War Ragnarok, where people realize that Kratos is homosexual. This is not... Um, Nathan Drake, Uncharted 5, where it turns out Nathan Drake uh, is a trans woman in the net. This is not that. I can understand that people, you know, would go, I'm upset with that because that's not what this is to me. You've already told me it's this and now you're saying it's that. Okay, I can understand that, right? But if you go through and see the comments, Sargon, of these guys, I, 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 it upsets me because I'm like, so these guys are putting out an indie game that you're probably never going to play. And the cruelty expressed in these comments on the PlayStation blog, on NeoGAF, on various various places, is, is so vitriolic, is so cruel, that it makes me go, there's got to be something else going on here. Because you're not going to play this game. Why does it matter? That's one reason I care. Because I think it's really stifling to creators and it's rude and it's scary and it's confusing. The other reason is personal. I have, like I've said, ad nauseum. I have a gay brother. I have a trans son. I have LGBT friends. Um, I know I'm a huge fan of, uh, of the woman who worked on this, who is a, uh, a lesbian woman. Uh, we had a wonderful trans woman as an artist at Bartlett Jones, who's a phenomenal artist. I know these people and I know that it hurts them 
when they see such anger and such disrespect and such cruelty sent towards them. I mean, imagine, like I say in this video, you might address it in a second. Um, imagine being a trans kid um, and, and you see this. Now, you, you might be a trans kid that's like, fuck this shit, I want to play Doom Eternal. That's fine. But let's say, you know, you're a trans kid uh, and, and you, you see this and you're like, you know what, that's pretty fucking cool. Those are my people. I don't get to see myself reflected in video games that often. That means a lot to me. And then you're reading about it on the PlayStation blog and you see all this anger and all this hate and all this cruelty your way. Why do you want to be part of that, man? I mean, look, I, I don't make a shit ton of money on my YouTube channel, but I can extrapolate. I make a decent amount of money and it's growing every month and I appreciate that, everybody. Um, but this is a guy who's got a million subscribers on his YouTube channel. I, I, I can't fathom how much money you make a, a month. I think it's good for you. But why, how can you be that well off? And how can you be that secure in your life and, 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 and be angry about the fact that it's like you want to take away from these people something that brings them comfort and joy and brings them a sense of connectivity around the world with other people that are like them um, in terms of trans or LGBT or black or Jewish or Muslim. Why is this, why is this a, a, a problem? Fuby says developers make it harder for the game to sell by making their protagonist gay trans. It doesn't matter though. It's not all about being the best selling game of the year. If it was, we would be throwing a parade for Bobby Kotick of Activision every fucking year. Sometimes, a lot of times, an artist, a creator, which is what we should be celebrating and supporting in this country, in this world, says, Yeah, look, as long as I don't spend a lot of the company's money that's funding this, I can express something that's meaningful to me. Just because it's not going to sell as well. That's not always everybody's goal, is it? I mean, why does that have to be the only and everything? It, it, Vitaphone says it does matter. It's a product. It, look, the people who fund these products know what they're getting into at various budgets, okay? This is not a game that has to sell a um, hundred thousand, well, it won't even sell that, but this is not a game that has to sell 10 million copies to break even. This is probably a game that cost about 1.2 million that will be on all kinds of systems and they're hoping they'll make their money back in a nice profit. You think every movie that gets made, the people who make it think it's gonna become Avengers Endgame or Titanic? That's ridiculous. A lot of times things are made because artists wanna make them and they can justify the budget being low enough that it can be fringe and they can make their fucking money back and then a profit. I, I, I don't understand why this is hard for some of you guys. Um, is Bacon Magma? Yeah, he's the mod. That's right. Once a young adult, if they feel that way, then I can understand. Oh, I don't, are you talking to me? I don't. I think you're in a different conversation. Um, all right. Well, let's keep going while we're waiting for Sargon. Um, Who has directed your attention to this, and why? What are they trying to achieve? I hope I just explained it. <sighs> anyway, David, let's carry on, shall we? British okay. to the core. Keep a blah blah blah. And apparently this has kind of upset a number of people. And so Sony today puts out their, you know, just on the PlayStation uh, Twitter feed, this is coming. And I start scrolling through the comments and lo and behold, it's exactly what you would expect. I hope the game fails miserably. What the fuck was the point in this? Here's a guy vomiting or sucking a banana. I don't know which one it is. They're both clearly not, you know, things you would want to see. Enjoy the backlash, this guy says to PlayStation. This was the cringiest and most out of place tra trailer I ever witnessed. This guy's got Steve Harvey like, what the fuck? Let's play the feud. More social engineering drivel. Okay, so just to, just to give these people in the comments their due, uh, well done for being on patrol, lads. You're absolutely correct. It is social engineering drivel. It's exactly okay. be the point of this, David. I don't know why you find this amusing or why you would think this is ridiculous, why you think it would be impossible that radical leftists, after realizing they couldn't just conduct a revolution in the West, felt that they need to, as Crenshaw puts it, attack the sturdy fortresses and redoubts of civil society. Doge, do you have Nafisa's number? We should call Nafisa and, get, Nafisa and get her in here. I think Sargon should talk to the art director of this fucking game. This is, this, no, she's not trying to start a revolution. She's trying to make a game that reflects her life experience. 
I don't know why you find that unusual or unexpected or impossible, but these people are clearly smarter than you are and maybe you should start becoming aware of that because it is social engineering. Again, why else would you have it? What constituency are you appealing to with Black Trans Lives Matter? You are not appealing to some commercially viable demographic. There. Life on hard mode says, <laughs> again, guys, I, look, you don't have to take me at my word, but I, you know, anybody who watches me, um, I don't, I don't lie. I can be wrong about things and I'll take it back. But like life on hard mode says it's invading all parts of culture. Radical leftists are pushing this agenda because they want a great reset. So again, if I saw that, I would talk about that. But you writing that or Sargon Akkad saying that, that there's no evidence of that. There's no evidence of it. It's just you're just saying it right. Um, and that's fine. But you don't don't you want to back it up? Not by showing me something that was written in 1989, but showing me something that was written in any age that people today are actually using as a, uh, uh, you know, to, to infuse uh, uh, the entertainment process. Okay, so Sargon is here. Let me bring him on and let me see if he wants to be on video. If so, I just need to adjust my setup. Uh, hang on a sec. Oh, my, my bad. Hang on, fellas. Uh, here we go. All right, Sargon, are you there? I'm here. How's it going? You sound just like the man on the TV. <laughs> that's weird because that's how I feel about you. I've been watching your channel since you had about 6,000 subscribers. I appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. Do you want to be on video? Can we do a video call or do you just want to do voice? Uh, it's Sunday morning. I haven't had a shower, so we'll just do voice if that's all right. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, let me let me change the screen here real quick. Um, I was watching something at night with British people. What the fuck was I watching? Oh, Ted Lasso. Okay. Um, all right. We all know each other, so you know. There you go. All right, Sargon, you're my best friend. So talk to me about, if you've been watching this stream, what am I getting wrong? So the, the main issue, I think, is intersectionality itself and what it's for and where it's come from and where it's going, right? Uh, the, the problem as well is that obviously no one knows anything about it. Why would they, right? So all they get to hear is the sort of shiny, well-packaged, front-facing uh, PR arm of intersectionality, but actually behind it, there's some quite ugly stuff. Can and you, can you, you for the sake of the chat and for me, I think I know what it is, but can you define your definition of intersectionality? Yeah, intersectionality is a stratagem. It is a method that was created by Kimberly Crenshaw in order to emphasize the importance of marginalized groups, whatever you consider these to be. Uh, in order to act as a Gramscian war of position against the kind of center ground of what I guess you could call middle America, uh, in order to essentially overthrow liberal democracy and liberal system in America, because that, in their view, is considered to be an outgrowth of white supremacy. And so critical race theory is the methodological uh, process of getting to that point. And intersectionality is kind of like the activist tool in order to form coalitions to attack uh, the American culture. So any any um, thing that looks like diversity or inclusion that occurred before 1989 when she wrote this paper, that was just a coincidence? No, this has been going on since the 70s. Okay, so the, okay, got it, got it, got it, okay. It's the, the, so the, term, he... the term critical race theory was, uh, sorry, the term intersectionality was coined in her 1989 essay. Okay, so I have no doubt, I haven't read it, but I trust you, I have no doubt that what you're saying about her view of the world is uh, good or bad is reflected in that paper. What I'm confused by well, is- she's, she's written she's written lots of papers. Yeah, uh, uh, papers, books, so, right, okay. Yeah, but, and, and there's, a, there's a particular university textbook called Critical Race Theory, The Key Writings That Form the Movement. Okay. Uh, it's 500 pages long and it's, it covers a, a what, something like twenty-seven essays, I think it is, and it covers a swathe of different uh, authors and different time periods. Uh, but they all have essentially the same goal. Um, fundamentally, I think the actual entire purpose of it is racial segregation. 
Okay. So here's my. I'm not for racial segregation, just so you know. I understand. I'm a but, liberal, so. Okay, so but here's what I'm. This is why I'm confused by all this because I I, mm. I don't doubt you're more widely read on this than I am, um, and I don't doubt that there are people who have these views that I don't that I do and don't agree with. Depends on what we're talking about specifically, but where I get a little tripped up is this idea that there's an agenda. As a guy who's worked in video games for 20 years, and before that I worked you know, kind of in television, uh, for about two mm-hmm. years. Um, it, it sounds like, you know, the way you guys present it, and maybe it's just the language you use to make a point. It, it sounds like what I said earlier, like you guys are under the impression that the executives at Sony PlayStation have, have these writings and every morning there's like a, a PA oh, yeah. system that comes on and says, <laughs> Remember, well, because, because in 20 years, 20 plus years working with and for Sony, never once did they tell me what I could and couldn't make. Um, oh, cool. So when when is this when is this agenda being sent to the people that are making the creative work from the people who have read these papers? Like, where is that evidence? Right. So you'll you'll notice that uh, now almost all companies have like diversity officers. Mm-hmm. And these people get paid a huge amount of money. They are the people who are running this agenda. Uh, the The very idea of a diversity officer is what this is. This is, you couldn't get that through any other ideological framework. Uh, so that's they're the people who are doing this. Now, the interesting thing about this is that well, well, do you have per, do you have evidence that these people are affecting game design? Sure. I mean, you're Where? preaching it right now. When you, no, when, no, no, when no, they no, wear, no. When they, when they, when they produce video games that say "Black Trans Lives Matter." But the person who's making the game is a black trans person. The person who's art directing sure. the game. But is... they're also, they're also ideologically an insectionist. Well, you, I, I don't know that, and you don't know that. I literally I know, do know that. Yeah. I absolutely do. Know you that. know? You do you know Nafisa yeah. Tung? Yes, in the same way. That, um, I know you, her. I, I I I worked with her for four years, man. I could probably get her on the phone if it wasn't so early in Utah. I'm not saying you're right sure. or wrong, but the idea that you're going to tell me, well, someone who actually knows people. the art director on the game that we're talking about, that y- you know what she's thinking better than I do. I just I I'm I mean okay. I I hear you. Well, it's but, like saying, how do you know that person wearing a cross is a Christian? Okay, but what is she doing that's saying she's doing anything other than telling uh, a story in a game about her and her teammates' experiences? Because it's set within a particular methodological framework. Which is what? And it's it, in sectionality. Again, it's, it's none of this is a secret. None of so this can is you not have a story about a trans person that is just a story about a trans person? Absolutely you can. So why is this, why is this not that? Because honestly, it's such a marginal group, it's such a small group, that it's it's kind of hard to find that. But I'm like, telling it, you right the, now, they are the people making the game is that group. Possibly. I, I suspect they would say that they support intersectionality. As the way you... Um, uh, okay, I mean, we can... I, I'll, I'll, I mean, do I'll, you think they wouldn't? Well, the way you describe intersectionality sounds pretty dire. You're not. You're not saying. Well, it is. Well, I know, that's, but you're. But the, the way you're describing it, though, you're describing it as a. We want to uh, totally tear down Western democracy and basically yes. have the LGBT version of uh, the the uh, the the radical uh, Islam uh, that they have yes. in certain countries. And I'm like going. Yes. I'm pretty sure. I've never yeah, heard they, they any do. of them say that. They do. That's why. They, yeah, but that's why you've got to use their particular pronouns. That's why. I mean, look at the that's, way. They I have a, the okay. Video, I have a. Right? I have a trans son. Okay, my trans yeah. son doesn't give a fuck what pronouns you use. He will decide okay. whether you're an asshole or not. If hmm. he asks you, "Hey, these are my pronouns," and you choose to disrespect his request he'll go okay well you have a right to be an asshole you have a right to disrespect my pronouns but he would defend your right sure to, to, to do that and, and and good for him that he sounds like he's a liberal right um yeah but these but... people aren't liberals and the that's the problem i have with them is that they're they're very aggressive and you'll notice that there's a lot of um uh so we say shaming uh, that goes on no i mean you ended your video that i was responding to just by just mass shaming just a bunch of people you didn't know who they were. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They were f- what was I shaming them for, though? What do you think I'm you, shaming you them were, for? You were shaming them for rejecting critical race theory. No, I wasn't. 
I was I, the, the reason I if you look at the video that you're commenting on, it's edited. I, I went. I know you did. But I'm saying if you look at it carefully and I'm, I don't mean this is like a gotcha. I mean, all it yeah. takes is to go. I was consciously picking out comments. It wasn't sure. because they were saying intellectually, I have a problem with this. This is intersectionality. Well, hang on, hang on. They're basically hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. the ones did. that I it was pointing that. out were cruel and mean and hurtful. That's what I, I was shaming. I, I went. Yeah, but I went through them on the stream, and I don't think they were. I mean, if if there may have been ones that you didn't show, I guess, and that the, obviously I couldn't reference. But the ones that you pointed out were people saying, "This is indoctrination. This is ideological. This is a, an agenda." You know that that was what you pointed on the screen. That was what you showed on okay, the screen. Okay, so take this is indoctrination. And they were right. Well, okay. Yes. So here's my question, though. Right? I mean, don't you think uh, if we take if we you know d why is it? Why is it that you feel um, so assured in your position um, that this is indoctrination versus simply people going, this is a low budget game. We're a very diverse team. I know people on the team and they are mm -hmm. uh, in the LGBT spectrum or what have you. And mm -hmm. we're telling our story. Why is your view of what this is? Both things are true. Well, okay, but, but, well, it might be true, but it, it, for it to be indoctrination, they would have to have a conscious awareness that they are trying to indoctrinate people to what? What do you think they're trying to indoctrinate promoting, They're promoting a particular kind of worldview. There, there are lots what of is the worldview? What, what is the view? What is the view? The, the view is, uh, and, they, and I'm quoting directly. That's fine. A race, a race conscious perspective. I'm not for race politics. I mean, race politics is evil. It's the reason that the Nazis were evil. And race politics has gripped America and the Western world more broadly, and it's fucking everything up. Okay, it's so evil. It's evil to categorize people on their race. Okay, Do you disagree with that? Well, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm, I'm trying to understand first. Uh, it's evil to take someone's No, 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 I, I know, but of course. They are, they are this because they're white or they're black or they're Jewish or they're X or they're Y, right? But that, but that is what critical race theory is. I mean, the, the, the movement itself and intersectionality comes out of critical race theory. Kimberly Crenshaw is a critical race theorist, but she also coins this kind of... Uh, she, she's like the chief strategist of critical race theory. Right? I, I, I but understand. It, begins, it yeah. begins by lamenting integration. It begins by asking for segregation and regretting that integration happened. That's how this all begins. I can't agree with that. You know, I, this is evil to I, me. Okay. And I'm, I'm a product of mixed race background. I think that's great. But what I'm saying, though, is if we're talking specifically about this title, you, you know, I'm willing to, to give somebody who has that view the benefit of the doubt, but you are offering no evidence that this is done to indoctrinate. You're, you're offering no evidence oh. that these people are sitting around going, we think uh, mixing the races was bad. We want to make America this way. I mean, again, I'm not saying there aren't people. Well, uh, what evidence would satisfy you? Uh, maybe them saying it or maybe finding an email where the, the head of the, I mean, head of the company said, Hey, this is our agenda folks. When we make this game, these are the five this points is, we want to, th because, because the what, problem, right? well, it's not the, well, hang on, hang on. Okay, you're, okay, you're, you're offering, or you're, you're, you're making a very bold claim mm -hmm. here. And, and so I know that you believe it, but don't you think that, you know, as they say, or they I'm paraphrasing, but sort of bold claims require equally bold evidence and proof. I mean, you know, you're, you're, yeah, but you're, I'm giving you the, the you're evidence. not, but I'm, you're not giving me the I, evidence. I, well, hang on, hang on. I am. Um, How? So I'm, because right. So I'm explaining the very structure of the ideology that your friends are promoting. Now I'm not saying that they know what the origins of this is, and I'm not saying that they have a particularly good understanding of it, right? Because one of the ways that critical race theorists and intersectionality uh, has marketed itself is quite subversive, frankly. It's been to present a very uh, friendly face and say, well, actually, we're just about empathy. We're just about helping people. Mm -hmm. But really, it's not about that. And so you've got people who the, uh, the, the Soviets used to call useful idiots who would, like people like Bernie Sanders and Noam Chomsky, incidentally, 
uh, who would go to the Soviet Union see that, oh, look, they've gone around a show city and everything's fine. Well, then, then everything must be great in the Soviet Union. They go back to America and they start proselytizing how great the Soviet Union was. Obviously, it wasn't. Uh, and so these people essentially are concealing what but, I mean, they're doing. But that's any, I doubt I mean, your friends. I doubt your friends have actually read the theory that underpins the ideas they proselytize in public. Okay, but these are what I'm saying. These are people. So what what, what you're saying is, I'm not they, saying your friends are bad people. I know that. I, I I'm not being sensitive to that. What but what I'm saying is, you're you're suggesting that this indoctrination um, mm -hmm. is what is driving the engine versus the literal life experience of these people being black trans lgbt like that that couldn't be it it couldn't be that this is their story it's the fact that yeah this is their story yeah that's true but they can't th th there's also th this other part even though there's no evidence of that i mean that that seems pretty leap of faithy to me Right. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is they are expressing the, um, how to put it? Hang on a second. Sorry, my son's just knocking on my door. Well, while, while, while you talk to your son, I'll, I want to address this in the chat real quick. This useful idiot thing, though, goes both ways. You, I mean, you know, the, the idea that America is the greatest country in the fucking world and we can do no wrong um you know sorry, and sorry about that. yeah and people are crying you know during the fourth of july um there's a lot of great things america's done there's also a lot of shit things america's done so useful idiots go both ways man i mean i, I don't i don't yeah they do yeah. yeah they do so but anyway um, go ahead well the, you you are absolutely right and there's nothing to prevent you from saying well look at these flag waving american patriots um they are covering up America's history of slavery by not emphasizing it and focusing on it and that that's not illegitimate you know that's that that is to say they are kind of like useful idiots for people who didn't like uh didn't like slavery and don't emphasize slavery right, right. that's 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 fair but where is um, it where is it okay like let me give you just a very specific example and tell me tell me how my son has been indoctrinated because he wrote a song recently. He, he plays guitar and writes music and stuff. And, and he wrote a song and I said, it was great. It was really interesting. It, it was about, it was about like just feeling awkward and, 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 and not fitting in and all this stuff. And I said, Oh, that's great. You know, what was the impetus behind this? And he's like, Oh, well, you know, that's how I felt in junior high or middle school before I came out. Mm. And I says, okay, great. And it's a great song, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, but what you're saying is if he were to sing that song, record it, put it out on YouTube, it, it, it couldn't be just a pure reflection of his experience living as a trans man. It would have to also include the fact that this woman in the eighties and, and all, all of her folks have gotten together and he's been indoctrinated and he's helping her spread her evil plan. Yeah, because the way that people frame things is very unconscious, right? That most people don't think about the framing and language that they use. But I mean, if your son had felt like actually deep down I'm a Christian and he wrote, or I'm religious, I, I've got a connection to God. Yes. And he'd, he'd written this song instead about feeling he wanted to express his faith. Yeah. And then he starts uh, writing about how he loves Jesus. Yeah. You would rightly say, well, that's connected to Christianity. Uh, probably, yes. Yes. And so in the same way, if he says, you know, I'm part of the LGBT community, well, that's rightly connected to intersectionality. But he wrote a song LGBT about how... LGBT is... Sorry, go on. Well, I, you, you believe people are really gay or trans, right? You don't believe they're making it up. Sure. Okay, so, no, of the you know, and, and you even said yourself you're an indi you're a, a mixed character, mixed breed, whatever, of different lineage. Mm -hmm. So you're not making that up. So just because you can be put into a box of I am a, you know, Irish black guy or, or Irish African guy or whatever, it doesn't mean that you agree with everything that Irish African people say. I mean, he is a trans no, guy no. writing about his trans experience. So that sure. automatically means that anyone who's trans believes in or is supporting no. intersectionality. No, 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 of course not. But this is the, but this is the, the, the trick that they're playing, right? It's the fact that you ask that that shows that the systemic nature of intersectional thought. Uh, again, because they are what they call race conscious, this isn't really just about race. Essentially, it's a form of class consciousness. 
that they try to claim essentially political ownership of everyone in that category. For example, I've got trans friends who are wildly against intersectionality. Like they are, they can see it for the uh, form of politics that it is, and it's it's a it, it's a cruel form of politics. It claims ownership of people who it has no right to claim based on an arbitrary characteristic, something that someone didn't choose and can't change, right? Uh, and that's a particular kind of political view. And there are people outside of this who get marginalised. There's a there's a YouTuber called Rose of Dawn. She's trans. She's a friend of mine, and she's obviously very anti woke. Uh, but the the thing is. It brings together coalitions of people and it seems like a safe place to go if you don't know what you're doing. Because, I mean, ultimately, one of the reasons this has been able to uh, continually spread so quickly is because it answers questions that the wider society didn't have a good answer to. You know, so your, your trans son uh, didn't have anyone else to turn to for any advice or guidance in this way. And so they're very clever. They're very clever. And they, they, they saw this and they ran with it. But now your son is like, they're going to consider him to be one of theirs. They're going to they're gonna say, well, you care about trans this, don't you? Don't trans lives matter to you. And it's like, well, hang on a second. What do we even mean by that? Like, what does that mean? What do you like, trans lives matter? What, what does it mean? It means that there are places, a lot of places in the world where if he went, um, he's very aware that he would be harmed or, or killed. Uh, at at yeah. worst and at best he would be mocked and shamed and made to feel like shit and so mm. when he says trans lives matter uh, or black lives matter or any whatever it's that hey the very nature of the slogan is pointing out that there is a disproportionate amount of violence mm -hmm. uh, and hatred and disrespect visited upon these specific groups is what it means but notice now that he's adopted a political position on behalf of people who he doesn't represent and didn't elect him. But but that's only if you that's that you're you would be absolutely right if because what you're doing though is you're saying that that you're you're making the claim that anyone who supports a group automatically takes on all of the baggage of that group as well. And they are intentionally or inadvertently a spokesperson and a supporter of all of those ideas i mean i think that's that's bizarre oh. that's like saying everybody who voted uh, or everybody who's republican agrees with every th single thing that donald trump did and that the well, very not necessarily well um, that's there, what there you're saying people, isn't it no 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 not necessarily i mean hey if you vote for donald trump it is an endorsement of donald trump right it, it, it is, but that, you know, I voted for Joe Biden, but that doesn't mean I agree with every single thing he's done. I think he's made some terrible sure. wonders. But that, that does still mean that you endorse him as a candidate, and so you are partially responsible for his presidency, right? Sure, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, you, you can say, well, I disagree with all this, but at the end of the day, there is a, a, a slice of burden of responsibility that's on your shoulders. Um, but, the, but you'll notice that Republican and Democrats are self-associative categories. You can choose not to be one. You know, you can choose to be something else. Mm -hmm. You can't choose not to be black or trans or white or straight or whatever. Right. You didn't get to choose those things. And so politicizing those categories actually removes the agency of the people in the categories. And so your son setting himself up as a representative of trans people. Well, what about those trans people who don't want him representing them? How how is he representing them by writing a song? You're you're setting yourself up as you, you, you're setting as you said, like, you're, trans, you're setting yourself up right. as the defender of anti uh, what's it called intersexualization right uh, intersectionality in, in, sorry um, well, hang on. you're setting yourself up as a, as an anti inter i can't say it you know it's late but oh uh, yeah yeah right yeah, yeah. and i'm like well you know you have a right to do that you have a right to speak to your holy cow million plus audience about your views of things and you weren't elected either so why is sure, why no, i don't get it i'm not claiming i'm not claiming ownership of people because of their innate characteristics neither is my son uh, but the thing is I, I i know but that that's where this is becoming a bit of a mott and bailey argument isn't it I, I don't know who that is son. i don't know who that is uh, it, it means uh changing the terms of the argument oh well because you're I the one who said that I, my I, son I but you did you said my son had been adopted by these people too and no other well, trans. i know but you said that no other trans person had elected my son and i'm like you're right but oh. no no person who believes your views have have elected you but you have a right to say them. I would defend your right to express them. Aww. Sure, but I'm not. I'm not claiming claiming ownership over anyone. But, that, but that's my the son's not either. 
Well, I, I, I didn't say he personally is, but, but when you, you say... But you did, hang though. On, hang on, hang on. Hang I, on. I will hang on, but just... Be, you, yeah, go go ahead. Hang on. Right, so, yeah. But the, the, the issue is with the social movements themselves. So the, the X Lives Matter, this politicization of a group of people making political demands on behalf of people who didn't necessarily want them and may well oppose them is really the problem. You're, obviously, your son having self-expression is not a problem at all. That's good. You know, he should express himself. And I think it's admirable that he uh, you know, felt brave enough to be able to come to you with whatever it is he'd written and, and done. Mm -hmm. I think that's excellent. And I say that as a father, you know, I, I I'm well understand. aware, you know. Um, but the, the problem is these social movements, uh, Black Lives Matter, X, whatever, you know, any of these like radical left-wing movements, uh, they all have essentially the same purpose behind them. And so when people saw the Black Trans Lives Matter t-shirt in the video you're talking about, like if, if that video, if you'd done that video and there was nothing political in there, and you were just saying, well, look, I know these people have made this game, it's not my sort of game, but it looks quite nice and it's probably going to be good for the people who are into that, blah, blah, blah. No one would have cared. Right? But the, the, the problem is when you introduce all of these political movements, which are broadly speaking under the rubric of intersectionality, then you get a bunch of moral imperatives. Well, hang on. What, what, what did I introduce? Because my video, I, I wasn't making a video about comments to my video. I was making a video about comments to the actual trailer that had no analysis. There was nobody talking about it in terms of on the Sony trailer. They were just commenting on that. So I didn't say anything to kick off these comments. No, 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 I know. But uh, but the reason the comments were there and the reason you were talking about the comments is because the comments were reacting to pol particular political symbolism that was laden in the thing. I mean, it's literally like, you know, if, there was a, if that person, instead of wearing a Black Trans Lives Matter t-shirt, was wearing a swastika, like there'd be people in the comments going, I'm not buying a Nazi game. I'm not interested in political indoctrination. I'm not sure. interested in this bigotry. But to be, and, 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 and by the way, exactly I, 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 well, it's not, and I'll tell you why. I, first off, I would support the right, and I do support the right, just like I support the right of a private company to say, we're not going to make a game where you play uh, Nazis and we put them in a good light. I also would support anybody's right to make a game about whatever the fuck they want. Um, yeah. So, no, me too. including Nazis, right? Um, yeah. Even though I think it's horrible, right? But yes. the idea that the Nazis have a track record, right? They've they've killed millions of people with their ideology. They they preach hate, all this stuff all day long. Uh, tr what 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 have the trans people done that would give people that same level of uh, anxiety and, and and hatred towards uh, them being trans represented? Trans people are not an ideology. Yes, but Black Trans Lives Matter is saying a statement. That is that, not. Yeah, but what what is why is that ideology uh, um, comparable to the Nazi ideology? Because communism has killed millions of people. Black Trans Lives Matter has nothing to do with communism. It absolutely does. How does Black Trans Lives Matter right, so in 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 it in as it relates to? the way that you know this team used it because you're sure you're, the, the yeah. inherent the inherent framing of the class of people is the communist uh, the communist um framework right so the the and this is again not a secret it's like been very from the very original uh, this this came out of something called critical legal studies which was a selection of marxists and you know Right, other flavors of radical leftists they've got like you know various different labels themselves but they're basically all a bunch of communists okay and from them this morphs into critical race theory so their their communist view of the world becomes racialized and so it's not proletariat and bourgeoisie it's white and black and so the signifier black means oppressed it means uh the proletariat basically and so you've now fallen into the communist worldview where you're claiming ownership of an entire class. And in this case, the class is black people or trans people or whatever. And intersectionality is the strategy of kind of uh, putting this through a prism and expanding it across any aspect of society. And so this is this is a new version of communism. Where would you put um, how how would you suggest? OK, so let, let's assume you could mm -hmm. rewrite history and this paper was never written. But just just to, just to be just to be clear, right? it's it's literally like, you know, your son, you know, 
like, well, not, you know, not necessarily your son, but, like, anyone being like, well, look, I just want the T-shirt that says Aryan Lives Matter. Like, I'm just saying that Aryan Lives Matter. They do matter, you know. Like, you know, the, the, the Aryan race, it, it matters. I'm not, I don't, you know, I'm not saying this, I'm not saying that. I'm not part of a big Nazi conspiracy, but Aryan Lives Matter. You'd be like, no, look, that is the way that the Nazis operate. That, that is part of what you're doing. You're being a useful idiot for these people. You wouldn't be able to deny it, right? And so that's what you're looking at when you see these X Lives Matter movements. This is a part of intersectionality. This is an outgrowth okay, of critical where, race theory. Where and these you, are racial communists. But and where so, do you put, where, where do you take all of that, though? And where do you put, um, or how do you deal, if that is your frame, how do you deal with the fact that while Aryan lives may very well matter, most white that's people huh <laughs> that's getting clipped isn't it someone's gonna clip that david jaffe Aryan lives matter well they should I'm, be I'm smarter just, no i kidding. think you're probably right but <laughs> where 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 does where does your compassion and or specific um solution come then from the people who right. are marginalized because of the very thing that you're saying shouldn't be categorized. If, if someone's going to pick on mm -hmm. my son, it's probably not going to be because he's really a good guitar player. It's probably going to be because he's a trans dude. If someone's well, going to... Why gonna, would someone support him? Why would someone support him? I, I, I don't... Why do you support him? Well, he's my son. I love him. Exactly. Exactly. Because he is who he is he's not just a, a I, I, no, no, I, part I, of I understand country, but that's right? not answering my question though why i i understand the positive i'm saying if 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 everything you're saying is accurate then mm -hmm. what do you do about the fact though that because i don't think you can deny that lgbt kids and people but let's just stay you know kids for now because that's mm -hmm. sort of what the game was or young adults sure. are being uh abused and harmed and insulted what do you do about the fact that um, you know, let's just let's just stay with that that minority. We could spread it out, but let's assume it's just that minority. Okay, so the reason yeah. though, you could ask a lot of people. I mean, you literally on the video response to me, you know, you're you're I don't know, maybe I'm reading into it, but your face seemed angry when you were talking about Superman taking it up the butt. I mean, yeah, I am. I am angry about that. Actually. Right. Because uh, and why, you actually said it was debauch. Well, hang on, let me. I just want to get the point. Yeah. We can talk about Superman in a minute, but but you called it like debauchery. Like there's something inherently problematic or wrong about being a gay person. So mm. you that well, that's I mean, right? That's how I took it. Maybe that's not correct. But ultimately, my question becomes then: so you've got people who don't like this group of people who are categorizing them and in categorizing them that's their motivation for the abuse that these people take and so what would you have these folks do then now uh, just to be clear i think that um and I, I guess what you're talking about is sort of christian fundamentalists um, no i'm talking about the fact that you literally said um mm -hmm. you know that superman which you have it wrong but i know you know you have it wrong it's not superman it's yeah, his son I know, I know, I know, I know. but 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 you know, let's just let's assume it was Superman. It doesn't matter. But you saying Superman taking it up the butt, uh, mm -hmm. basically male gay sex is debauchery, which is a reflection of one's lack of morals. So, no, sure. I mean, I mean, is I, that is I, that I what you think? I grew up watching Superman, and I don't ever recall Superman being sexualized. That doesn't matter if, if it wasn't Superman. If it was, if it was gay man. Well, I mean, ultimately, you, know, well, <laughs> you called it, well, you called I mean, it debauchery. You, you basically said yeah. the act of yeah. men having sex together is a problem. It's not something I'd show my children. I didn't ask that. Um, well, that's, that's what I'm saying, though. Like, what I'm saying is um, the, the fact that they are sexualizing Superman and bringing his sexuality to the fore and making it a key part of his character is sexualizing that character and that's not appropriate for children in okay my but it's okay for him to want to fuck lois lane though sure but i like you don't you know show it you know like and, and it's whoa it's don't what i missed that don't well, what don't like, what don't, don't show them doing things they right? don't wait, this wait, is, have you read a comic where you literally see superman uh, superman's son fucking somebody in the butthole well, I don't know. I haven't watched it, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me that it ends up going that way. Because, okay, but why don't we uh, wait until these, it these does? Because I assure to... you, it's not. But yeah. the the point is, though, why are we even talking about his sexuality? 
right? We don't normally talk about the sexuality of Superman. Yes, we Captain do. America. We talk about it all really? the time. Sure, we do. I what do you? I what did, did you watch? Well, how can you? I can give you proof. Did you watch oh. Avengers Endgame? I didn't. I'm afraid. I'm not a fan of Marvel. Okay. Uh, at the end of Avengers Endgame, he goes back to uh, uh, Agent Carter or Peggy or whatever because that's the love of his life. Oh. He, I thought Superman was DC. He is. We're talking about Captain America in Superman. Oh, right. In Superman, um, he's he's you know Lois Lane is the love of his life. Lana Lane before that was the love of his mm -hmm. life. Um, right. We sexualize that. Why can't we do it for other yeah, folks? Is it is it is it like brought to the fore? Is it focused in that way, or is it just treated as a normal part of life? Because that's the thing. If this was treated as a normal part of life, then fine. But what, how uh, how but again, how do you think it's not being treated as a normal well, part of life? I mean, all all, all I saw was uh, Superman, you know, having a a big snog, or Superman's son, whatever. It's having yeah. a big snog. Is that uh, is that really is that is that a kiss? Well, it it. it I know shag funny. shag is fucking, but snog is what? Yeah, it's it's a very intense kiss. Uh, okay. I I wouldn't want my kids watching someone having like a deeply. You know, intense, passionate kiss. This is not appropriate for them, I think. Um, and so, of, of any of any group. Yeah, no, generally, it, like it's you know, like the the depth of it is very sexual. But maybe this is just me being a prude. Who knows? It, right? Well, it might be because uh, I mean, if you look at your well, on, screen, look, I mean, look sure, at, maybe. Yeah. Hang on a well, I'm just saying that if you look at your screen, all I no, had to no, do no. was Google uh, Superman Lois kissing, and it's you know, they, sure. And um, where am I? Where am I looking? Sorry. Uh, just at this. Oh, it's my bad. I'm. You know. I'm. I'm new at it. I don't know what I'm doing. No, no, no. It's. It's all right. It's all right. Um, but I'll I mean, that's. You know, these are pretty passionate kisses. Um, you know. Okay, I can't. But yeah, uh, and don't get me wrong. And here's the, would, By the way, here's the song. Uh, hang on, hang on. I, I, I can't see it at the moment. I'm afraid. Why not? I, I would apply this because the stream's got a delay on it. Ah. So I'm, I'm waiting for it to come up. I'm just letting it play in the background. But the point is, like, this isn't new, right? It's not new watching uh, the continual sexualization. And yeah, okay, fair enough. You know, some of those, like, so the, you've got the one where Superman's holding Lois Lane when they're married. I think that's quite innocent looking. But there are some that are a bit more intense, mm -hmm. perhaps, that are inappropriate. Then that's me, right? That's fine. But, okay, so you're um, saying that would be inappropriate as well to show your son. So if your son was reading a Superman comic. Yeah, yeah. Possibly, okay. Okay. but but the but the point is, this isn't the beginning. This isn't the end of it, right? This is just the beginning of it, and these things become more and more debauched anyway. Because really, I don't really want to talk about Superman's sexuality. That's not really the important thing about the character, is it? You know, the the important thing about the character is that he represents a set of uh, normative values that are in some way kind of sacred, and I think that there's an attempt by the insectionals uh, to undermine all of that. I mean, they do say it expressly. And so I, I, I'm becoming a bit more protective about these things. Possibly it's because I'm getting older as well. Right. Um, right. I mean, I, 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 I hear the language you're using. I mean, your people invented the language. Um, so I, I know it's English. Who's my people? English. Oh, English right? England. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. You know, um, yeah. but I just... I. I don't, I do, you know, I've got to be honest with you. And again, I don't mean to be a dick to you. I don't know if I believe you. Sure. I don't know if I believe that your son watching, um, you know, Man of Steel, which has this very deep romantic kiss between Amy Adams and uh, Henry Cavill, mm -hmm. would really be something that you have a problem with. You, I, I just, I mean, unless you're, I, I don't know how well, I haven't, I haven't seen it. So, I mean, you know, I, I would have to look. My, my son's only six as well. If he was like 15 or something, obviously I wouldn't care. Okay. Um, okay. But but this this is part of a wider pattern of increasing sexualization, though. And I mean, you know, you're not going to say that our culture isn't dripping with sexualization. It, it, it absolutely is. But at that point, yeah. that's a you know, and I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't really have an opinion on that necessarily. I, th I think it's bad. I, I I think that there's been a dramatic shift away from protecting the sanctity of children, and we can see it everywhere. And I th I think it's kind of insufferable. Maybe that's why I'm more sensitive to it. To be honest, could be, um, could be. But I'm saying yeah. so. But but just to be clear, you're not. You have the same problem with Superman kissing Lois uh, in these images as you do in this image with his son kissing this dude. It's exact. There's yeah, nothing. I don't think they should be tonguing each other. I, you well, know? I understand, like, but there's no difference is what I'm saying. The fact that it's... Well, you, no, there, there, well, there is a, there's a difference. Well, obviously. I know that, but I'm saying that you have videos or you, you're on record or even if you're not, 
if I went back a couple of years, even before this story of Jonathan Kent came out, you would have a problem with Superman and Lois kissing. I don't think I've ever talked about it. I mean, I've become more conservative as I've become a father. So, you know, like five, six years ago before my son was born, I probably didn't mention it. Right, right, right. Okay. It's just not yeah. something that was on my radar. Um, but yeah, this this whole, like, the, the continual and increasing sexualization of culture, I do have a problem with. And then we, like, look, all we're going to talk about now is, like, is gay Superman. It's like, look, that's, we never just said, oh, this is straight Superman, right? It, I, that's I, not what the character was about. And yeah. putting the focus on these things but why is changes that, why the is that tenor the, of these Why things. is that the focus, though? I mean, have you read the comic? Well, that's, no, I haven't read the comic. But the, that's the question, though, isn't it? Why is that the focus? It, it's not the focus. Why is that what we're talking about? It's not the focus any more than it, it, it's it's unusual and it's um it's it's not what people have been used to and so it's a news story I think because a lot of people look at it uh, who are in the media both the creation mm -hmm. of media and the reporting on media they look at it as a positive thing they look at it uh, and, and again I appreciate that you don't but. You know, I like the fact that I'm looking at the Teen Titans right now, which is a great fucking comic book. I don't I know you mm -hmm. don't read comics, but there's this wonderful character no, in the comics called Lobo, who's basically like DC's Wolverine. Um, and right. his and his daughter is a lesbian. And I assure you, when you read Teen Titans, of which she's a member, um, you know, every now and then there's a subplot associated with it. But it's not mm -hmm. like the way you describe it. It's like it's like the comic of the gay and it's just like well, no, dripping with it's dripping like, with gay and it's like that's well, no, that's fine like i agree that that that's a perfectly legitimate uh, kind of subplot right that's it that's a perfectly it's it's a small part of the wider universe right and so it's not that the entire thing focuses on this and it's not monomaniacal or anything that's fine that's totally normal right? and in fact that's that's desirable to have a plurality of stories within a, a universe right okay, it's completely okay. desirable um, but when, but you'll see all the reporting. I've only gone on the, you know, the 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 articles being written and stuff, and all it focuses on oh, is gay Superman now, gay this, gay that. And it's like, well, why? You know, that's not a plurality of stories. That's a monomaniacal focus on one particular characteristic that's sexual. Sorry, I don't want that for my kids. You know, that's not like that's not the thing that I'm looking for in entertainment for my children. And I don't think I think that other people should be slightly skeptical about that for their own as well, at the very least. Uh, but again, I'm not saying all of this is uh, a product of intersectionality either. Like, there's perfectly liberal um, ways of approaching uh, gay stories, and like, you know, the the struggle to understand one's own desires and how they don't mesh with wider society and things like that. This is all perfectly normal. This is the human experience. Like, this has been going. So, for how thousands of how years. can you determine what representation of the LGBT experience is coming from what you would deem a pure normal acceptable place and what is part of a political agenda well again it's it's really about how it's being politicized so if if you see them if you see people creating uh, categories around uh, arbitrary characteristics then it's been politicized so if say someone says black trans lives matter that's political characterization and that's political advocacy uh, they're not saying you know and it would be the same as saying well you know how, if they were wearing a MAGA hat or something. Right, but right? what You'd would like, Superman's well, son have to do in the storytelling where you would just feel it's an innocent story about this guy, you know, because he's a teenager coming to grips with who he is as a sexual sure. being? What what would have to change for like, you that, to that's, be... That sounds like actually quite an interesting story, doesn't it? Like, that's that, what the story is. Plus, yeah, but well, I, I've not read it, so I don't know. Right, I'm, I'm just going on the discourse that's going around it. Um, but if it's just, you know, uh, a human story where it's told from the first person, from that person being like, look, I'm struggling with this and I don't know what to do. And he's looking for help and he, you know, maybe he's being shamed by a preacher or something. And, and you know, there, there, and there could be, you know, other aspects of it that lead you into danger. You know, you might find yourself, you know, the the subject of predatory men or something like that. Adult men, you know, things like that. It was just, which are real problems that I think probably do happen. I mean, everywhere, obviously, but like, you know, for in the gay community. So th these are these are ways of approaching it that are not political advocacy, but are telling a human story. But instead, if you've got a political slogan on your shirt and it's a racial slogan, uh, then I think you should be understandably concerned about that. I think that does speak to a political kind of political, uh, particular kind of political advocacy. And I think that's inappropriate, especially in comic books. 
I think I think I you know I, I I'm try I you know again I uh, although if you ever talk about uh, uh, or you talk to racists, they'll say, Jaffe, you're not white, you're Jewish. But I, I'm white presenting. Let's put it. I, I don't care either way. But um, but but I present as white. Okay, so I, I and, and I am straight and I am cis and yeah. you know I have the the I have pr- the pretty much the average white American experience. Uh, yeah. You know, but I wonder, you know, if. I lost my train of thought. God damn it! Sorry. Well, Han, let's let's. That's all right. Let, let's talk about how you're categorizing yourself there, because I find that fascinating that you categorize yourself as a straight white cis man. Well, I don't. I, it was in the context of a question about how people categorize themselves. I don't walk sure. around thinking I'm straight white cis. I mean, it, you know. do you not? Because I think there are a lot of people who do think that way these uh, days, and I think that it doesn't enter my. I mean, I'm I'm I I intellectually I have. Uh, awareness of it but i don't think about it i have the privilege of not having to worry about it but you do worry about it if you're thinking about it you, you no. become conscious of it right because so I mean, it, is, it doesn't mean i'm worried yeah it doesn't mean i'm worried i about mean it. worried you know you i don't have to have the talk like, with my children that you hear a lot of uh, african-american people say that they have to have with their children about when you get stopped by a cop you need mm-hmm. to be deferential as fuck because you don't want to basically get shot how do you act when you get stopped by a cop? Um, I don't really think about it. I'm just like, what's up? I, there's absolutely nothing about that cop that worries me. Because, um, yeah. you know. I, I mean, I, I've seen videos of white people being shot by cops. Sure. I, Some I, are quite awful. I, I know. I have as well. But I, I, I personally would be afraid of American cops. If yeah, I was they're, they're, by I, I, yeah they're, not, they're not great. But I don't, I don't worry about they them. They seem highly strong. Yeah. And they're not well trained. As, as, at least a lot of them aren't. But anyway. There, there are problems here. But, but. I, I guess I'm I'm fascinated to me by the oh I know what it was the black trans lives right so if you're if you know here, here's what I'll say let let's assume that you're right about all of this and mm-hmm. that there's nothing wrong in your mind with a trans kid or a gay kid or whatever it's the fact though that this other side is uh, indoctrinating them and using them for their own political agenda right. Well, in the same way that you can look at, uh, you know, skinhead kids and neo-Nazi kids and go, you know, these are kids that are outcast and lonely and they're picked on at home and in school. And so they're an easy target for these uh, neo-Nazis to come in and sort of be a family for them. Well, yeah. you do agree, I assume, that, you know, political agenda aside, most people who are in teenagers who are picked on for their you know who they are uh, strange or, yeah any you know, strange character exactly. that ultimately they are picked on so what mm-hmm. and, and in that let's assume you're right i'm not saying you are but let's assume you are they become vulnerable targets and so they are going to wear a shirt that says you know they're yeah. going to push back just like a, a punk kid who's sick of the system is going to wear a fuck the cop shirt these yeah. kids who are looking for their identity and trying to find a way to, to, to have some power are going to wear a shirt that says, you know, my life matters too. Trans lives matter. Black trans lives matter. Mm-hmm. Whatever. So, but ultimately they're in a culture where they are under attack by people because they're strange and they're different and they're outside of the box. And so what would you have them do? Right? If, well, if the only people that are listening to them... Naughty. Well, sure, but if the only people that are listening to them uh, are these groups that you say want to indoctrinate them in order to tear down Western democracy, um, mm-hmm. how do you fix that? Because isn't that the real problem that these, if, if you're yes. right, that these kids are hungry and starving mm-hmm. for some form of acceptance, but we have mm-hmm. such a low threshold of acceptance, ultimately until that gets solved, we're never going to get away from this. I, you are 100% on the money there. So how that does that exactly. get solved? So I, I'm, I'm just going to characterize it as the conservative position, right? I, I don't want people to get triggered by that word or anything like that. It's, when, when I say conservative, I, I, I mean basically the non-political position, right? So the, not the Republican position, not the Democrat position, not the insectional position, not the Nazi position. Yeah. Like the, the position of those people who, are, who aren't really thinking in you know, politicized categories and the, the, that are really thinking in terms of relationships, right? Okay. Uh, that's that those people have failed to uh, show proper inclusion 
to young people who are struggling and don't know what to do with this uh, this strange aspect of themselves, right? Um, I think the the term I think I would use is investment. Uh, in the same way that I invest in my family and friends, uh, this is something I think maybe we should be more considerate of, right? Uh, and I don't want to sound like you know some sort of Mormon preacher or anything going door to door, but like I do think it, it comes down to the way that we treat one another that facilitates this vulnerability to radical groups and mm -hmm. this is something that i think we as a society have essentially almost on purpose kind of absconded our duty on because it's hard work you know it's 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 it requires self-sacrifice on our part to say yeah actually i'm i'm gonna make an effort with you know a friend of mine who seems to be a bit cagey and and doesn't want to come out and doesn't want to hang out and doesn't want to talk like it, you, it's easier to go okay well fine i'm just gonna go hang out with these people who, who i like talking to Right? Yes, that's right. It, 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 it's a lot easier, but the thing is, that is the problem because that's a that's a form of kind of social ostracization. And I think if there's one thing that's at the core of all of this, it is this kind of isolation and ostracization. And it doesn't make for a healthy society, like a society that just allows people to sort of ostracize because they're a bit different, is the problem. And I I completely agree that we need to start thinking of methods of inclusion, but I don't think we should be doing it on the grounds of the radical left right so I, I think that the normal sort of family-based society need to I mean obviously it like if you're if you like I'm sure you've done I'm sure actually you're probably a shining example of this your son's like dad I'm trans you're like okay but you're my son so it doesn't matter you know that 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 doesn't you know I, I'm here to help you I'm here for you sure because you're my son and if my sons did the same I'd be like okay well you're you know, you're my son I'm your dad the relationship is more important than any of these categories to me and so that's the over that's the you know the overriding bond that i wouldn't allow to be broken right no matter what happens you're still my son and so this this is the sort of mentality that i think the conservative uh, side of society has failed to emphasize and nurture you know there's they haven't been able to bring these people in and so they get easily picked up by these radical groups well that's a, who are like mean, oh yeah we're gonna overthrow the system man you know and it's like that that's uh, that's a failing on sort of like you know our side of it the conservatives well the conservatives are, are kind of fucked in that way because they you know and you know basically the conservatives absolute love of the free market and pure unregulated capitalism is that, 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 that's not that they're, they're they're ideological liberals um uh the, what when i say conservatives i mean people who are pre-political as in they they aren't expressing political theory uh they don't have like this sort of um reaganite view of free markets or anything like that they're, they're people who are uh, just living their their social lives with their families, right? That that's what a conservative is. Uh, what you're talking about there is is a particular form of like neoliberalism, and that's a political ideology. Um, but there, well, are, there I'm, are I'm people. Talking about a, I'm talking about a, 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 an economic system. Um, yeah, but the, but I'm not. That's the thing. I the, so I, I shouldn't have used the word conservative because in America it does have. Those oh right, yeah. I, I was um, yeah. Well, yeah. anyway, the, yeah. The point, the, the regardless the, the, of the, the what you want to categorize, you know, the, the local, the local communities, the families, you know, yeah. the people and, and that may be that may be something that we just have to figure out how to survive as a species long enough to evolve out well, of. Because ultimately, well, the way it was dealt with in the past. Uh, mm -hmm. where religion tied a lot of this stuff together really doesn't mm -hmm. work anymore. And modern mm -hmm. modern religion hasn't really figured out how to solve it. And so people mm -hmm. are left to finding their own way, which is great to some extent, but it creates, it, it does allow a vacuum of a lot of people yeah. who want to make a lot of money to come mm -hmm. in and create a desire for people to own more, buy more. You'll be happy if you buy this, you'll be happy if you buy that. And that stuff that pulls you away from focusing on family and things that actually matter. So, well, I, I agree. And it's, it's about the things we hold in the forefront of our minds. Right. Um, and I think that one of the things that we have failed to nurture are our relationships. Like, how we care about the people around us. And I do think it's sort of like a, a, an actual, because they use the word community all the time, but what they mean when they say community is race, effectively. Like the black community is if black people all live in one town, 
you know it, and when they say that, then they mean every black then as well so essentially when they say community they mean race but that's not what community means community is a, a definite particular point in time and space and you know there are definitive named individuals in the community who are related to one another in a demonstrable way their neighbors their friends they you know they, they they say good morning to each other in the post office that's what a community is and we've completely lost this sense and so what i what my i i, I like, i'm not saying i've got like the grand answer or anything like that you know cuz i don't um, but it becomes apparent to me that that has become very weak in modern society probably because of the technological advancements like the internet social media and the way that we categorize ourselves now that's not really very accurate to reality and it it, it strikes me that if we could start working on trying to actually bring more to the position of preeminence of how we talk to one another and why we talk to one another and the what we what we want them to get out of it and what we expect to get back from them then maybe we can actually start stitching together the social fabric back in a way that does include those people who previously felt ostracized because i think ostracism is the worst thing you can do to a young person sure like i i, I honestly think it's the worst thing you can do and so if your son is, came to you and said papa papa sargon <laughs> um i like the boys you'd be totally mm -hmm. cool with it well, it wouldn't mean anything, really. I'm not religious, so... I'm not like, religious I mean, either, but you'd be okay with I, it, though. Sure. Like, you know, it, I'd be more annoyed if he said he liked anime. <laughs> okay. It, like, it doesn't bother me, right? What bothers okay, me sure. is cool. that he would, not be, he would not be taking personal responsibility for himself. What bothers me is he's not studying hard at school, or he's not being respectful to his mother, or something like that, right? Like, these are the things that bother me. I don't, I don't care who he... Like, you know... I don't think he's gay, but like if he was, I, I would at least expect him to have good taste in men. In the same way that if you know if he's straight, I expect him to have good taste in women. Like you know the like, I wouldn't. I would just want the best for him. Right. You know? I right, want him right, to be right. happy, and and this sort of like I do think is this kind of attitude that the nurturing of the relationship itself because he's never going to not be my son, of and that's unbelievably important i'm sure you totally get that right you know you it, you're, you're obviously yeah it, it, i mean it, it i mean i honestly it, it's there's you know people talk about oh you're a really good parent and i am but not because of that mm -hmm. i mean it, it's got nothing to do with that i i don't i've never understood why parents care what their kids sexuality and or gender is anyway it's none of my fucking business who they identify as i just want him to identify as happy and healthy and uh, a good person the rest of it has I nothing think, to do with me i think that there is um a legitimate concern for health issues in some of these communities i have to be honest um the statistics aren't always good right such as what now uh well quite quite um quite a few venereal diseases in the gay community um so there, there are genuine health issues there, and no one wants to talk about it. And it's not a moral failing, uh, but it is something that can affect lots of people. And it's something that if I, if my son was like, I'm gay, but okay, well, you've got to use this protection. You've got to be, you oh know, sure, well, yeah, of course. Skin. I mean, yeah, that I'd say but, that's anybody, but, but yeah. These, but these are much higher than in other communities. That's the thing. You well, know? it's and probably because like the, yeah. the lesbian community doesn't have the same rate of venereal diseases as, as the gay community, right? And, it, and so it, it, you can't pretend like there aren't differences. There are differences. And it's okay to be different. Sure. You know, it's I mean, fine. I, I, it's don't, I don't okay. have the stats on that. But if it, it, let's put it this way. I've give it, it up, yeah, I'm not saying I, I have no reason not to believe it. Simply, you know, it's something my brother told yeah. me once. He's just like, you know, uh, he, he lived in West Hollywood for a while. And he, he was saying mm. something like, you know, you, you, have, I, you have to be really in shape and good looking and blah, blah, blah in the gay community here in Hollywood. And I said, well that's weird you know it, it, he says well why he says men are visual and men like a lot of sex and so when you have two men in the same relationship so it may just be that mm. they're fucking more and thus the yeah. uh the the, the 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 disease count goes up simply by nature of the maths and and it's also accessibility to sex as well uh, women are a lot more guarded with sex because sex comes with consequences for women obviously uh, like pregnancy and so women usually demand an investment 
from yeah. her and the man in a form of relationship. But when you've got two men, well, they don't obviously. There's no there's no danger at all from pregnancy. Yeah. Well, and so I don't know. But I don't know. I, here's what risk. I here's what I'll say. I just want to be clear. I mean, I, I good or bad. no no. I, I'm just I I don't necessarily agree with all of your assessments about when women and men and gays, but I, I appreciate it. I appreciate your perspective. Um, hang on, hang on. Let, let me clear. I, I'm just, I'm, talk, I'm talking very general terms based on the statistics, right? Based on like, you know, my okay. life experience, what, what I've seen. It's it's not an absolute, you know. Right, it's, right. In general, you know, men in the gay community find sex a lot more easily than straight men do, right? Well, I think that's, just, that's, 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 yeah. Is it, exactly, right? Yeah. And it's because of the lack of investment required to get the sex. And that's fine. Like, I'm actually, in many ways, quite envious, to be honest. But that also comes with a, a, a you know, it's a double-edged sword. And that means that venereal diseases can profligate in these, in the gay community a lot quicker than they can in communities that have less sexual activity. And so it's just something to be aware of. Right? Let me it's okay. Let me let me ask you. Let me ask you this. I, I, I it's like five in the morning here almost, and I I, I love right. I, I appreciate you talking to me and, and giving me your feedback on this. Um, but okay, so and I, and I ask this as a guy who, you know, I have a small YouTube channel. I understand the value of uh, drama. I understand the value of putting out video. I'm, I'm not. I, you know, people are like Jeff. That's clickbait. I'm like. It's called marketing. I never lie about my videos, but yeah, I'm going to oh, make the them. Attention economy. Come on. Right. Can't judge him for doing clickbait. Right. Well, click, click depends how you define it. Clickbait would be like, oh, I'm going to tell you the secrets to Spider-Man uh, Far From Home or No Way Home. And then it's about knitting or something. But but yeah. anyway, so I understand the, 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 the money and the value and all that, but... Is it, would it be a fair criticism of you? And the only reason I know you at this point besides tonight, and I've enjoyed talking with you and I hope you have as well, um, is, is because you were one of those stories about one of the guys got kicked off of something. Was it YouTube or Patreon or? Oh, it was Patreon. Okay. Because I was insulting a bunch of Nazis. Okay, right. So that, that, that's how you came to my attention. But is it a correct assessment or do you think it's fair to say that the, you know, there's a part of your audience or a part of your channel or a part of your brand that doesn't vibe with what you're saying here, which is what you're saying here seems to be very much about, I like people, I have no problem with gay folks, black folks, all this. I just want everybody you know, to, to, to be aware of the forces that are out there and everyone deserves a shot, blah, blah, blah. But it seems like your reputation, and I don't know if this is true, I mean, that's what I'm asking you. It seems like, though, that your channel can be less about that and more about stirring up the anger. Is that fair no. or not really? My, my, no, I think that's totally unfair. I think okay, that's characterization okay. from the political people that I've been criticizing. Right, totally fair. Uh, totally fair. Like, Colin, Colin because, Moriarty gets a bunch of shit, and I'm like, dude, that's not Colin. So it could be the same yeah. with you. I don't know. I don't know anything oh. about you. Well, I, I'm absolutely confident that if you go back, I don't know, like four or five years or something, just w watch a bunch of the videos that are on there, then you will find I am, I, I'm probably less conservative than I am now. I do feel that I've gone more sort of, you know, family focused, be concerned about our relationships sort of thing. That's in the last couple of years. Um, but I've always, I've always been a classical liberal. And so I've always been um, very much like, look, the, 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 the problem, you know, people don't get to, if people don't get to choose something, it's not fair to judge them on it. Like it's not fair to judge a short person being short or a fat, well, a fat maybe a fat person could choose the other way, but like you know what I mean. Like it's it's not fair to judge people based on things they can't change. And I've always said this, um, and so this has been a consistent theme throughout my channel. And I've been almost exclusively focused on rebutting this radical left wing ideology. Like my entire channel, the very first videos I did were like. Wait, feminism doesn't make any sense back in like 2013 to social justice is actively aggressive against liberalism back in 2016 to sort of social justice is now destroying relationships in 2021. Hmm. I've always been focused on the ideology and I've always been quite libertarian as well. You know, I don't like government overreach. I don't like oppression from the state or anything like this. Right. And so you, well, you we can, can agree. You can we we can agree on that. On that. All right, fair. Well, yeah, it's not not a controversial position. Yeah, well, for but some, I, 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 yeah, no, I'm I'm not I'm not interested in saying gays are bad or trans are bad or anything. Like that. I've never done that. That's not what this what my position is, because again, I don't see those as being choosable positions. I, I'm I'm very much like a '90s liberal 
because that's when I grew up. Uh, in the way that you know, if something isn't something you chose, then you're not morally responsible for it. Right. Well, listen. There's a lot. I would. I would love if you ever have any interest in doing an interview. I'd love to have yeah. you back on. You know, when the time streams well, I, work. I sent you. Uh, I sent you a friend request on Discord. So oh. you know, when 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 you're next around, away, send me a message. I'm happy to. Check oh, out. I think that would be so much fun. I'd love to talk to you. Let me just say one more thing. Yeah, I have a question. You. So, um, I, I it's. I mean, this is obvious. You're not a gay dude. No. Okay, but if fucking Superman would give you his powers, would you mm-hmm. fuck him in the butthole? Hmm. Come on now, I would. I told somebody. Let me ask you this. I told, thinking, somebody, I, I, I told just, somebody I'd suck off a hobo for a billion dollars. Would you suck off a hobo? I would for a billion bucks. A billion dollars. Come on, yeah, man. I probably, I probably could use. Suck it that hobo. Dollars. Get to sucking. Right, because you could use. I like, mean, I'm not. Go ahead. I, I'm not. I'm not. I, I'm gonna have to weigh it up. Like you know, I don't you gotta really weigh it up. It's a billion mouth. dollars. Yes. Suck the hobo. Yeah, hey, hey, I'm not saying it's not a compelling argument. God. Fucking hell, that's a compelling argument. Like, come on, a billion dollars. Oh God, I really don't want that. Here's this would be fuck. my day. This would be my day. <laughs> it would get up and suck off the hobo, and then go around the corner and get fucked by Superman in the butthole, and I would fly out of there to therapy. But I'd be a rich <laughs> motherfucking superhero. <laughs> then I'd be like Batman well, I mean, uh, oh. with Superman's powers. Honestly, that's pretty fucking persuasive. I don't know how. Goddamn! I'm gonna I'm gonna do some work. I'm gonna find us a superhero uh, and a hobo, <laughs> and uh, we'll we'll live stream it. All right. Well, no, well, 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 I mean, if it's live stream, then it's on the internet fucking ever. Well, come on, like you know, but you think pe- you though. think people are I'm gonna you, we're gonna you're gonna know why you got the powers. So you know, anyway, uh, yeah, Sargon, yeah. thank anyway. you so much, buddy. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you Anytime, soon. Man, this All right. Great. Yeah. T- take care. Yep. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry, sir. Truck four times 48. Thank you so much for joining the diet set of soldiers, sir. I appreciate it. Let me give you a little, uh, I had some dope in here. I have an edible. Let me give you an edible. These are Cracker Jack, baby. These will send you to the goddamn moon and back. Um, well, there goes Sargon. There you go, buddy. That's for you, truck. Thank you, sir. Um, look, man, we don't, you know, I don't know him at all. So I don't want to, you know, you know, you always want to be careful, but I can say simply based on what I know from that conversation, I don't agree with the guy on a lot of things, um, but I don't have to agree with the guy on a lot of things. He seems like a, a very intelligent guy. He seems like a, a, a thoughtful guy. Um, I don't agree with a lot of his shit, but he don't agree with a lot of my shit. And so I defend his right to express things I don't agree with. And it sounds like he would do mine as well. I did vote for Biden. Yes. Um, you're right. So you're, you're, you're saying, uh, Sargon says grave doll is a Gamergate dude. Yeah. I don't, I mean, again, I don't have to agree with everything somebody says to be able to have a conversation with them. Um, but fellas, it's four o'clock in the morning here in San Diego. What fun. I sure enjoy talking to you guys. I enjoy talking to him. Uh, Sargon, if you're still watching, thank you so much for calling in. I appreciate it, buddy. And, uh, I'd love to have you on, uh, later. Uh, I did vote for Biden. Yes, I did. Um, (laughs) <laughs> my thoughts on daylight savings. I'll tell you what, let's do, let, let, if you guys have questions, I'll do five minutes, 10 minutes. If you just want to talk, let's shoot the shit. Um, do I have a daylight savings? I'd rather it go away. Jaffe thoughts on Texas building a border wall without help from Biden. Are they brave enough? Or are they dumb? I, I think if it's legal, they should be able to do it. I mean, I, you know, um, uh, I'm full of it for saying that telling artists not to not put a thing you disagree with hot or wait, I'm full of it. Are you asking me? Are you full of it for saying that telling artists to not put a thing you just, Ooh, baby, you got to rewrite that. I'm bad at double negatives. And that's like, that's a, that's like two double negatives. And I don't know how to read that. Please rewrite it. Um, Jaffe, you pretty much proved him wrong in the first five minutes. Well, I, I mean, again, you know, it, it is, it is what it is. I mean, there's no right. I mean, there, I think there's a right. He thinks there's a right, but you know, Jaffe thoughts on Metroid being nominated for game of the year. Let me tell you something, Mario M- Metroid aside. Uh, I, I will tell you this. Okay. Hotter. I got it. Thanks buddy. I, I, I will tell you this about, uh, game of the year this year. Um, you know, there have been so many good games that have been indie this year and so many just interesting and fresh and unique titles this year that 
Um, I, w- I mean, I, I, what, I don't care. It's all bullshit. I've been on these nominating committees. It's all bullshit. But I, I, I think it'll suck, though if it's the usual suspects, right? I mean, like, I thought Ratchet and Clank uh, Rift Apart was just fucking phenomenal. It was a great fucking game. It's not a game of the year game. It's it's the best Ratchet and Clank there's ever been. Um, but, come on, game of the year? Um, even Forza. I mean, unless Forza 5 Horizon blows people's minds at a gameplay level or at an... Ec- it, 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 I can't wait to play it on the 9th, but it just looks like, okay, a really good racing game, right? Compared to some of these games that are literally pushing the envelope. I mean, I mean, there, there's a sequence in unpacking. And again, I, I, it's not for everybody, but it's just so clever. There's a sequence in that game. And if you don't know what it is, you literally start from this girl. She's a little girl. And you go through about six or seven sections of her life up until I guess she's in her 30s or whatever and all it is is you're unpacking boxes as she moves into these new places you know she's a kid she's in college she has her first apartment relationships whatever and um, there's one segment in that game there's a bunch of these where you literally are being told a story through mechanics and there's this one just brilliant section um, where you move in with this, I assume it's a guy, the apartment's decorated like a guy would decorate his apartment. And, you know, it, it first it's kind of annoying because the game is kind of a little bit like um, uh, Tetris. It's not, it doesn't play like Tetris, but you've got to take things out of boxes and find places for them. And some are very specific and some are wherever you want to put them. And in his apartment, it's clear he's just not really that accommodating. So you've got to go jump through some hoops to get all her stuff in there, right? Um, And at the end, though, what you're left with is her diploma from art school is what it looks like. Um, And there's nowhere to put it. Like, puzzle-wise, there's no place to put it. The only place you can put this diploma is under her bed, under his bed, basically hiding it, right? Well, obviously, it turns out this is not a good relationship for her. She breaks up with the guy, blah, blah, blah. But it's so interesting where when a gameplay sequence mirrors the narrative, where suddenly you as a player are unable to proceed. You are unable to advance in the game with unless you basically take something and hide it away. It's like the essence of who she is as a character in order for her to progress in that relationship cannot be on display. Right. It's amazing. And the game does that in about four or five or six times. And it's just like that. It doesn't mean it's the best, most fun game. Certainly not the most successful game. Um, But it absolutely is one of the best examples of interactive storytelling that I've ever seen. Gabriel says, Jaffe, where do you like to put your feminine products and unpacking out in the open? Um, it depends. Usually I put them under the cabinet of the sink, but there's one apartment she has where there you have to put them, uh, you know, out in the open because the sink is designed that way. I haven't played Psychonauts 2 yet, Doom Slayer, but I will. I'm looking forward to it. Um, get the Unsighted devs. Oh my God, I got to get them on. Unsighted is a great fucking game, man. That is a great game, Kudan. Um, he says discuss being a trans dev and putting some of that in the game. Yeah, I, 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 there are trans folks in that game. And, uh, I think there's only, there's mostly women robots in that game. Um, um, Jaffe, where do I pick up the latest issue of gay man? Oh, that's a secret. That's a secret. I can't tell you. You, you have to be either of the LGBT community or you have to have been voted in as I was as an ally. Otherwise you'll never get to read gay man. (laughs) Um, Gone Home I thought was great Gone Home was great and I'll tell you something else that was not only was it a great game for what it was but they really gave you that red herring you didn't know until the end if it was going to be a fucking horror game or not and at the end um, you go into the bathroom and it looks like the bathtub is just filled with blood I won't spoil it for you but it, it it's fucking amazing um Thoughts on Game Pass not giving you access to Horizon Day One? Eh, I don't care. I'm getting it for free. I mean, it's, it, you know, you're getting into semantics at that point. You're basically saying that Game Pass isn't Day One Horizon, but 
Microsoft would say it is day one, but if like if you play pay early, just like with EA games, you get it early. Um, so you know, I, but I don't care. I'm excited. Aria of Sorrow, Heretic, I love, but I have gotten to a part in the map. I did like Death Stranding. I haven't finished it, but I liked it a lot. I've gotten to a point in the map where I literally don't know what to do. Um, like I've tried everything, and I don't want to live stream it because I know somebody will just tell me, and I want to solve it, but. I, I don't know where to go. I don't know where to go. I do like some turn based. Yeah. Um, okay. I think I'm tired now, fellas. Um, Metroid Dread game of the year. I mean, it is for some people Dread. Uh, I didn't hate it. It just, I didn't, it wasn't for me at all. I thought there was some really bad design in it, but people seem to love it. That's great. Um,. Oh, Doom Slayer, I streamed Death Stranding a couple of weeks ago or last week, but I did I did like it, um, and I still want to finish it. I mean, I, I got hours to go to finish that game, but I liked it a lot. Um, yeah, that's right, Mr. K, I'm an honorary homosexual. There you go. Um, the Tar Belt? I haven't gotten that far. If you're No, I haven't. Oh, you mean in Castlevania? Uh, it's a part where, I mean, I've got, you know, I've got the room that you warp to the rooms up top that aren't connected they're connected by warps excuse me fellas and uh and Fletties. um and I, I i've gotten most of it done except one little thing at the bottom of one of the squares and i don't know how to get in there oh returnal was great and guardians was great i didn't love death loop um but all right fellas i'm out uh i'll see some of you guys on tomorrow's stream or videos uh, and again thank you guys for the great they don't agree with a lot of you or some of you guys but uh Thank you for the great chat. Thank you for the civil chat. Thank you, Sargon, for calling in. Looking forward to talking to you soon. And uh, you guys have a good uh, Sunday. Oh, it's Sunday.